As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, every? Oh God, that was terrible. What? What's up, everybody? I'll leave that in. You guys can enjoy. Usually, my voice cracks at least once during the show, but it's not in the what's. That was in the first syllable of the fucking puberty. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 151. And how? How do you follow up an episode about one of the greatest Nintendo games of all time? Why you talk about one of the greatest Sega games of all time? Last week we talked Super Mario Freakin' Brothers. This week we're talking Streets of Freakin' Rage 2. And I know that I have a reputation as an anti-Segaite, undeservedly, might I add. But I am so pro Streets of Rage that I practically go door to door in my neighborhood singing its praises. With socially distanced, of course, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I started this series with Streets of Rage 4. I had never played a Streets of Rage game. And then Streets of Rage 4 actually showed up on Game Pass on my Xbox. And people had been talking it up and talking it up. So I was like, ah, all right. Because admittedly, I kind of left beat em ups back in the 90s, which I know is where Streets of Rage came from. But I never say it because I'm a Sega. I blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Uh, so I finally played Streets of Rage 4 on my Game Pass on Game Pass a while back and and loved it. Fucking loved it. It's incredible. So then I finally played Streets of Rage 2 on my Genesis Classic, which many people consider to be the peak of the original trilogy of Streets of Rage at least, and I was fucking blown away. It is so good. Streets of Rage are they're the best beat 'em ups I have ever played. Ever, not even close. And I don't know if I want to lock myself into this statement because I'm still discovering the gems of the Genesis library. But Streets of Rage 2 is quite possibly my favorite Genesis game. I, at some point way down the road, we are going to do an expansion pass where I rank my favorite Genesis games, but I'm still discovering them. So I don't want to lock that in quite yet because there's still a lot that I have to play. But this is certainly a contender. 
for top of the list for best Genesis games that I've ever played. It's incredible. Uh, my guest this week making his Remember the Game debut is my longtime buddy Joe, a Sega kid through and through. He grew up with that little black box under his TV. Uh, he's got an absolute passion for the rage-filled streets, as do I. And we had a nice talk about beating up fat guys that fly through the air and spit fire. Uh, and we'll get there in just a minute because speaking of fat guys that spit fire, it is time for yet another edition of the Remember the Game infamous intro. <laughs> And if you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. And consider this your warning. Our intros are are fairly long, Uh, but they're fun. There's lots of video game talk and stuff like that. It's not just... Well, I mean, it is a lot of me just rambling, but it's also well, it's rambling about video games. It's this is this is that first island in Super Mario World before everything opens up and you can fucking go and do all these crazy places. This is your intro level. This is your tutorial level. So just enjoy it and have fun. Uh, we have merch. I got to plug it. Hoodies, T-shirts, coffee mugs, and they're all rocking the new sweet Remember the Game art that was drawn by my friend Joe over at 4545creative.com. You can find all of our merchandise at rememberthegamepodcast.com. If you're interested, it is a great way to support the show. We sold quite a bit of it, too. I was, I, It's the coolest shit. Whenever someone sends me a picture or something, just telling me that they're rocking something from this stupid podcast, that makes me feel like a fucking pimp. So thank you for all the support there. Rememberthegamepodcast.com if you want your merch. And of course... The easiest way to support us, probably the cheapest way to support us, is over on the old Patreon service. We are at 297 Patreons right now. We are so fucking close to that magical 300. And the beginning of the month, which it is right now, you guys are hearing this, is June 2nd or maybe, I don't know, it could be fucking August 15th. I don't know when you're listening to this. Um, But the beginning of the month is the best time to sign up because you have the entire month to sample the wares of being a patron of Remember the Game Industries before you're going to get charged another $2. So I'll explain all right now. Uh, For only 2 bucks US per month, you get uh, two extra podcasts every single week. You get exclusive access to both my gaming news show Game Patch each and every Friday and my gaming discussion show Expansion Pass every Sunday, which many consider the crown jewel of our library, myself included. And then you also get instant access to every old episode. They're all downloadable right there onto your phone, just like this episode is, which is fucking dope. This past Sunday on Expansion Pass, we talked about games that need a sequel. And that was a really fun episode. I'm, I'm praying that we willed one of those games into existence. Uh, and as is becoming tradition during the intro, here is a sneak peek of last Sunday's episode of Expansion Pass, Games That Need Sequels. The first game that I think uh, I'd really like to see a sequel for, and one of the first ones, this is one of the three that came to my mind right away, uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Originally for the Nintendo 64, it's on Xbox now, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, We reviewed Conker's Bad Fur Day on Remember the Game a few months ago. I think it won a Patreon poll. If it didn't, maybe I just decided to play it. Because I didn't play Conker's Bad Fur Day back in its its prime on the Nintendo 64. And it's one that I've always wanted to play because I've heard how funny it is. and And I thought it would make a good episode of the podcast. So I finally sat down and I played it on Rare Replay a few months ago. And I, I, God, fuck, I love the humor in that game. I, I said it on that episode of Remember the Game, and I stand by it. I think it is the funniest game I have ever played that is not South Park related. Because I do think the two, I would put the two South Park RPGs ahead of it. But after that, I think Conker's Bad Fur Day is, is right, right at the top. Um, I think the humor has aged pretty well. I thought it was still really, it's obviously a lot of stupid toilet humor, but... I'm a stupid idiot who likes stupid toilet humor, so I thought that was fine. But as well as the humor has aged, the controls in that game have aged like a fucking potato or whatever food doesn't age well. So that was last Sunday's episode, and now for this weekend, uh, it's the last episode of Expansion Pass before E3. So we're going to do the classic predictions episode. I'm going to take some swings. I'm going to try not to play it safe. I I don't want to do something stupid like be like, Sega is going to announce the Dreamcast too. And it's going to have all the games from all the systems. Like, I'm not going to say something stupid, but I I don't want to play it too safe. I want to take some swings and have some fun with it. Uh, I'll read a bunch of the community's predictions as well. And then we can mock everyone that was wrong. And we can discredit those that were right for saying that they played it safe and took the easy ones. I fucking, I get so 
fucking excited for E3 every year. And this is the first year that I've had like a podcast like this that I could really fucking, or maybe did we do a predictions episode last year? Maybe we did. Maybe this is my second year. Whatever. I'm really excited to do E3 predictions. So that's what we're going to do this Sunday. And for those of you wondering, are we going to review E3? That'll be on Game Patch the following week. Because that's my gaming news show. That just seems like it'd be the best time to review what happened at e3 so we'll break that down again you get those on patreon for only two bucks a month plus all the old episodes plus you can join our remember the game discord you get to vote in our patreon poll which will be going it goes live at the beginning of the month so it'll be live maybe by the time you hear this if not it'll be live by thursday for sure uh you get the ability to submit comments for all of our podcasts including playing play one remake one erase one and you get a shout out and get to hear me mispronounce your name like i'm about to do to all of these people a huge thank you to all of our newest patrons kaiser dragon kyle dodd benjamin johnson jared bushlian uh, sorry jared <laughs> and pp poo poo cuckoo pants and if you think i'm too proud to say that on my show for two bucks a month you don't know adam blank so thank you all so so much welcome to remember the game industries patreon.com slash remember the game and normally that is it for the patreon plug but like i always mention, the beginning of the month is the best time to sign up because if you sign up on like the last second last day of the month then you get charged the day you sign up, but then you also get charged on the first of every month moving forward. And I always warn you guys, because I don't want anyone to get hit twice on if they don't want to, you know? And Kaiser Dragon, one of our newest Patreons, wrote in to the show and said, Hey, Adam, I'm officially a hot dog now. One of the things I love about your plugs for Patreon is that you warn us about the double hit if we sign up late in the month. Very honest of you, sir. But I wanted to sign up and take that double wham as I wanted to sign up as soon as I had finished with the backlog. Awesome work on episode 150, by the way. Thank you. Even though I've PM'd you about this, I also want to publicly blow your cartridge and message that I'm so happy for you and the empire you've built here. Even before I became a Patreon, I spoke to yourself and others on social media and Twitch, and you really do welcome all those who support and listen to your podcasts. It's great to be a part of a humble and friendly community. Keep up the awesome work, man. A huge respect for how you do these podcasts in your own style. Lots of swearing, general funny mistakes, and pure passion for what you do. Can't wait to hear about Streets of Rage 2 and get sucker punched with nostalgia. That feels nice. Thank you very much, kaiser dragon and i just wanted to point out and we're gonna get into this a little bit more and blowing in the cartridge but i'm i'm i try to be as absolutely honest with you guys as i can and again like when i say we're gonna get into that blowing the cartridge like in like two seconds but i i never want anyone to i have refunded people that have signed up on like the second last day of the month and been like yo come back in 48 hours i'll I, I, if i catch it in time then i ask and say do you want me to do you want me to refund do you want to come back i and you know, it's, it's, I, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm under an obligation to do that, but I don't want anyone to feel like you're getting ripped off. I, I am not, this podcast is not worth getting ripped off over. So we are into a new month now. If you've ever thought like you could literally sign up now for the two bucks, listen to the entire month, you know, get all the extra podcasts out of the way. And then if you're like, all right, well, I'm done with this, then, then shut it down. Cause I'm, I'm so confident that once you sign up and hear that the extra podcasts are just slightly better than this podcast, you'd be like, well, you know what? That's worth the change in my couch. That's, that's what I'm shooting for. And I'm, really proud of this community so thank you very much kaiser dragon this fucking community kicks ass and i'm pumped and i'm i'm in such a good mood today i'm i've had so much coffee i'm doing this earlier in the morning than i normally do last night i don't know how long it'll have been since you know when you guys hear this but the montreal canadians eliminated the toronto maple leafs in the stanley cup playoffs and i know some leaf fans listening to this i'm not even throwing dirt in your eye or anything it's just for those of you that don't watch hockey that's like the oldest rivalry in all of sports i'm a montreal canadians fan my dad is a toronto maple leafs fan this is the first time they've played in the playoffs since the 70s and montreal one and i can't get a hold of my dad and i'm just i'm so happy because i just want to mock him anyway okay all right let's get into the show oh yeah we have a p.o box by the way you can find our address at remember the game podcast.com and i stream on twitch tuesday wednesday nights saturday afternoons look for member the game over on twitch.tv it's completely free if you want to watch you can sub and stuff if you want but you just come hang out with me and i argue with the with the audience and I play games and it's a lot of fun. Okay, that's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you with blowing in the cartridge. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our Patreons, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment blowing in the cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. <laughs> Let's blow. Uh, great fucking questions this week, too. I had a hard time picking which ones I was going to read. So thanks. Fuck, I love... I- Oh, I love our audience. Uh, Morgan 
wrote in and said, good evening, Adam. It's 930 in the morning, Morgan. Quit drinking. Oh, it is here. Uh, Morgan says, good evening, Adam. You recently commented about how much Twitch takes from you for their services, and I was a bit appalled. I'm curious about the other providers of your entertainment like Spotify and Patreon. Who takes the least from you slash us, and what's the most efficient way to support you other than just mailing you cash? Don't mail me cash. <laughs> Don't mail me cash. Uh, and actually, Lord Finish wrote in with a very similar question, and Finish mentioned that a lot of people outside of the United States play, pay $3 Canadian minimum per month when they sign up. So I wanted to get into this. If you didn't hear it, I don't remember what show I mentioned it on, but Twitch, like when you subscribe to my Twitch channel, which again, is completely optional. I'm not being like, you better subscribe because you you get like some emotes and stuff like that. I don't run a lot of ads, so you don't really skip ads. It's more just a way to support the show. Uh, it's five bucks, I think is the the shortest subscription. And yeah, of that $5, I get 250 and Twitch gets 250 um, I don't know if I'm breaking their terms of service talking about this, but I don't give enough of a shit about Twitch. They could ban me. I don't give a fuck. Um, so yeah. So whenever you, you give me a sub or if you gift subs in there, like, cause you can, you can donate subscriptions to other people on there. I get two fifty per per sub and they get two fifty. And if you sign up with your Amazon prime sub, because, uh, if you have an Amazon prime membership, you get one free subscription on Twitch every month. And a lot of people, that's what they do is they come by the channel and they just give me their Amazon, the free Amazon prime sub every month. If you do that, then I just get the two fifty or whatever it is, two forty or something like that. Uh, I don't think Twitch gets anything and that's just how it is. So, and yeah, like I, I want to be, and that's what I was talking about in the intro where I want to be honest with you guys about how much money I get from what you give me on Twitch. I get half. So Um, I've never once said this and I, and I, I hesitate greatly to say this because I am not trying to convince you guys to donate to me. I am not at all. You never have to give me a dime ever, but, but if you're on, if you're wondering, if you're on Twitch, if you subscribe, I get 250, they get 250. I have a donate button on my profile where you just can do what is you just, it's like, it's like a gift basically on PayPal. Um, that I just lose like a service charge. So like if you donate two bucks, I think I get like a dollar seventy or something like that. So I do get a little bit more. Well, I get a, a you know, I get basically your donation through a donation as opposed to the two dollar fifty service charge on a sub that Twitch is quite they don't really advertise that. Um but but I'm not saying I I've never wanted to be like, hey, don't sub donate because I, I'm, I know a lot of people do their Amazon prime subs and I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to get 50 cents. I don't really care what, what you guys give me. Uh, but if you're wondering, I don't want you guys to feel ripped off cause I get it, Morgan. It is a little bit of a joke as far as Patreon. I don't know the exact amount that they take. Um, but it's, it's, it's certainly much better. Um, like I'm, I'm kind of guessing, but of like a $2 subscription, I think, I think I get about a dollar sixty, dollar sixty five. Some, some, I, I get like seventy to seventy five percent. I believe that math is yeah, that's math. No, no, that's a little higher, a little lower. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I, I get most of a Patreon subscription. They do take their 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 pound of flesh, but it's it is much more reasonable than Twitch. Um, and then the merch, you know, I have margins on the merch after I pay Teespring to print everything. Um, and I think that's all the ways to support merch, subscribe on Twitch, subscribe on Patreon or, or donations on, and I never plug the donations cause I feel guilty about taking them. But if you're curious where the money, like how much of it I get, there's your answer. Okay. So the, 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 the part I get the most from is probably a donation on Twitch and then probably Patreon support and then Twitch subs. And then merch is a whole different ball game altogether, but it's also more expensive altogether. So just so you guys, I like to be completely honest. If you go to my Patreon page, I always leave up how many patrons I have and I always leave up how much money I'm making. So right now I have 297 active patrons for $897 US per month. And of that 897, um, I don't know if that's before or after they get theirs because it transfers into Canadian before I get it. So but, but either way, anyway, just so, if you have any other questions about that, if you've ever had questions before you sign up, I don't want anyone to feel like they're getting ripped off. Feel free to message me and I'll tell you as much as I can. Okay, we'll move on from the money now. Uh, but thank you. That's a great question. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, Master Boyg 
wrote in and said, uh, I want to know how you feel about Googling when you're stuck in a video game. I've heard you talk about 100%ing games like Spyro, Crash, Donkey Kong, and Mario games, but you've also mentioned that you looked up certain gems in Spyro and stuff too. For me, if I have to look something up, then it completely takes away from my feeling of achievement. It's like there'll always be this asterisk beside it for the beside the win. I'll spend hours looking for a gem in Spyro or a power cell in Jack and Daxter instead of Googling how to find them, but I'm stoked that I found everything in those games without, quote, cheating. Some games get left unfinished because Googling makes me feel like the game has beaten me and I convince myself I'll come back to it someday. I've recently been thinking about adjusting my stance for Googling certain games, but I think I'll always feel a little bit like cheating for me. At what point do you Google and do you feel defeated at all when you can't figure something out on your own? Love the content, buddy. Being from Saskatchewan and I love the occasional cracks at Canadians and the Prairie Folk from Master Boyg. Uh, well, thanks for writing in, Master Boy, and uh, fucking wow. I didn't even know you guys had internet in fucking Saskatchewan, so that's awesome. Uh, no, I'm, I like Saskatchewan. Well, <laughs> I, I tolerate Saskatchewan. I don't know if I would like it, but it's okay. It's all right. It's just, for those that don't know Canada, Saskatchewan is just a giant field, and some people live in it. That's basically what the province of Saskatchewan is. Uh, is You know what? I used to feel the exact same way you do, Master Boy. I would spend fucking hours looking for something without googling it because i was like that's cheating and i don't want to do that because i don't like using walkthroughs and that kind of stuff and it's very rare that i look stuff up but as i've gotten old, like i'm 37 i try to you know i mean i don't want to say i have a job because i don't tend to i don't really have a job per se i tell stupid jokes and yell into this microphone but you know like i have, I have stuff to do i have responsibilities i have bills i get time you know i only have so much time to play and and so i i have like a limit like if i have if i have i'm trying to think of how i'm gonna word this first of all i don't 100 percent a lot of games and there are games like Donkey Kong and like Mario. Most of those, like I, the only Donkey Kong game I've ever 100%ed is Tropical Freeze. And I can't even remember if I had to look anything up for that game or not. But most of the time, I don't bother 100%ing games. And so I don't look stuff up. I just beat the game and I'm happy. Like I don't go after a lot of trophies or achievements. I don't do a lot of collectibles unless I adore the game. I just want to beat the game and then I'm done and I want to play the next game. But I used to be the same way. I wouldn't love, I'd never look up how to find anything. And as I've gotten older and I have less time and I just, I have less patience, I was like, fuck this. So I usually, I don't, I don't have a set rule, but like, if I feel like I have given it an honest effort and exhausted all my options, it's not like there's three more areas to go look in. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to go look in those. I'll just look up which one it's in. If there's like one piece missing and I know it's in one of these three places, Instead of like Googling it, I'll, I'll go look at those three places. Like I won't do that. But if I feel like I've looked everywhere and there's still something missing, if I really want it that bad, I Google it. And you know what? It is kind of cheating. And I don't, and I'm, I'm, I don't even, I just, I guess I just don't care anymore. And I did. And it took me a long time to get over that hump, but I've slowly hit a point where I'm like, my time matters more to me than knowing to myself that I didn't have to look up where that puzzle piece was in Banjo, in Banjo Kazooie. Does that, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So if I've given it, if I really want it, if I've given it an honest effort and I can't find it, then I'll look it up. But other than that, yeah, like I'm not, I'm not sitting here with a walkthrough fucking holding my hand through the entire game or anything. That shit bothers me. But I've, yeah, it's just, it's, I'll own the cheating. I'm, I, I cheat. I'll own it. I'm okay with that. So that's how I do it. But I understand where you're coming from, boy. I felt the same way. Plus, again, you live in Saskatchewan. You probably don't have enough internet to look up where shit is, so you can't do that. <laughs> I'm going to hear about that. Someone's going to fucking write in about that. Uh, Trevor Sevenoak. Oh, pardon me. No, Honest Pokemon Trainer. I lost my place in my notes here. The Honest Pokemon Trainer wrote in and said, Dear Adam, you cheeky bastard. As the self-proclaimed Pokemon rep in this group, how dare you? How dare you? imply that we are not watching 18 year old Becky play Pokemon whilst in a hot tub just to beat the elite four. I have learned so many strategies from her. I can't think of any right now. I'll watch the stream again and get back to you. I, uh, that made me laugh. If you guys don't know, Oh fuck. I remember I do so many podcasts these days that I can't even keep. Oh, it's game patch last week. We were talking about how Twitch has added a hot tub beaches and pools segment or some or, uh, category for streamers or something like that. And I was talking about how, uh, I don't have a problem with that category because we all know what those streams are. Nobody's tuning in to watch Becky play Pokemon in the bathtub to learn strategies. You just want to see Becky in the bathtub. But honest Pokemon trainers called me on my shit and that made me laugh. I like it. Trevor Seven Oaks wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, thought I'd go off topic. You make a lot of food references. For the record, a lot of you have pointed this out and now I'm getting self-conscious about it because I didn't realize I referenced food as much as I do. But you're right. I do reference food a lot. 
Trevor says, uh, I know you make a lot of food references. So I assume that you're a foodie. So what is your favorite food? Mine, I guess, is curry slash Italian, but I love Thai, pizza, and burgers, but not together. Are you a takeout guy or do you cook? So I've always assumed, thanks for writing in, Trevor. I've always assumed that a foodie, <clears throat> excuse me, is like a snob, isn't it? Or like someone that's very like, you know, I need to have the best of foods. And I consider, my, like, I'm, I would not consider myself a foodie. I would consider myself a pig. Cause I'll eat any, I'll eat just about anything. As a kid, my dad is a, is a fast eater. My dad is not a picky eater. My dad's military. And my dad kind of just taught me as a child, if, if someone's willing to make you food, then you, you're eat it. And that's just kind of my mentality. Like it's, there are very, very few food foods that I won't eat. There's very few foods that I'll complain about. I don't send shit back at restaurants ever. Like I just, and I know that we were talking one day about um, undercooked food and that, like meat in particular. That's my one real caveat when it comes to food is I'm terrified. I had the I had food poisoning years ago, and I got as sick as I've ever been in my life. I was in the hospital, I was throwing up in the emergency room of the hospital. I was in bed for days, just throwing up water and then going back to bed, and then throwing up water and going back to, I was so sick. So anything that I think might make me sick, like anything with an expiration, an expiry date on it, if it gets to within a day of the expiry date, I can't eat it. Like dairy product, I don't care if it looks fine. I can't, I can't eat it. I can't eat um, any kind of ground beef that's not completely browned all the way through. And I know that outside of Canada, a lot of places, and even in Canada, some people do, we've had this debate before and everyone's like, Oh, I'll make you a medium rare hamburger and you'll be the, the greatest burger in your world. I won't eat it because I'm too scared of getting sick again. In my steak, I like rare to medium rare. Cause I know steak won't make me sick, but a, any kind of food that might make me sick, I can't do it. It's a big food. It's a big roadblock for me. So anyway, I don't know if I consider myself a foodie as much as just someone that really enjoy. I love to fucking eat. I should be like four hundred pounds. I love to eat. Uh, as far as my favorite food, probably. Mm, I mean, I really like. Nah, steak. Steak is probably my favorite. Like a good slab of fucking rare to medium rare steak is good. Oh, with a big giant baked potato and a beer. That's oh yeah. Um, and actually peanut butter, peanut, if I had to pick one food to say is my favorite food, it's probably peanut butter. I put it on, I put it on fruit. I put it on sandwiches. I, I put it on hamburgers. Don't fucking knock it until you try it. Peanut butter on a hamburger is incredible. I just love, I love, I just eat it with a spoon. I fucking adore peanut butter. So peanut butter or else steak, or I really, I mean, burgers and hot dogs and I, everything. I like everything. I'm a pig. That's, that's my answer, Trevor. I'm a pig. And then they, they call me Badger wrote in about food and said, the most recent issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, which is a great comic book series, we learned of a certain turtle's favorite pizza toppings. What are your favorite pizza toppings? And Stupid Monkey wrote in about this a couple weeks ago and I couldn't squeeze it in. So I was like, all right, I got to answer this. Uh, pepperoni, mushrooms, and green peppers. That is my, I mean, I, dude, I'll eat ham and pineapple on pizza, jalapenos on pizza, onions on pizza, barbecue chicken. The only pizza topping that I've had so far in my life that I don't like, that's not like a weird fucking, fucking weird topping. Um, I don't even hate anchovies, but they're, they're my least favorite. Like I'll eat them, but I prefer it without. But yeah, if you were like, you can order any pizza you want, what do you want? Extra pepperoni with mushrooms and green peppers. That is my favorite pizza. And maybe onions. That's, oh yeah. Uh, a couple more and we'll move on here. Corey Street. Uh, wrote in and said, Hey Adam, question. What game do you enjoy or love playing, but every time you play it, Angry Adam appears? For me personally, it's Mega Man X6. It's not that great a game, but I love it. I love playing it, but certain points and aspects of the game tend to bring out Angry Cory. It's a love-hate relationship. That's a great question, Cory. What's a game that I love... But every time I play it, I just get pissed off. I mean, for those of you that have watched my streams, I think you could argue just about every game. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> just about every video game is like that. Um, hmm. Trying to, you know what? Uh, I don't want to get too into it because we're going to talk about it on the show soon. But I've been playing Zelda 2, The Adventure Link of Link on the NES uh, for the podcast because it won May's Patreon poll. And, um, I, I, I love playing it, but I get mad every single time I play it. So I actually, I might say that would, would be near, near, if not at the top of my list 
Um, MLB The Show is another one that I love, but when I'm in a hitting slump, sometimes that game fucking really pisses me off. But uh, that that would be, yeah, I would say those are probably the two that come to mind first and foremost. The Adventures of Link and MLB The Show would probably be the two that come to mind for me the most. Uh, yeah, man, I could do a whole episode about that if I really sat down and thought about it. Fucking... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES used to be like that too, but now I've got that. I finally have made that game my bitch. I own that game now. So, and finally, it's uh, it's letter time. It's letter time. And Karth from Kotor, fuck, I hate that handle. Karth wrote in and said, "Hey Adam, I was just wondering if you'd ever learned to love Karth just like everybody else." God, you're a piece of shit. Uh, but then, he, but Karth continued. In all seriousness, which next gen console do you like the most? I recently got a PS5, and I was wondering if I should have gotten the Xbox Series Everything instead. Thanks. You know what? This is something that I actually had thought about doing an episode of Expansion Pass about. But then I thought, like, I don't know if there's enough. Uh, here it is for the week. Enough meat on the bone to talk about that for a whole episode. Uh, do I prefer my PS5 or my Xbox Series X? So. I've had my Series X since December, and I got my PS5 a couple of months ago. I play my Series X substantially more than I play on my PS5, but that's almost entirely because of Game Pass and the fact that I just have hundreds of games on my Xbox sitting there looking at me, which is I, I don't have on the PS5. Because the simple fact of the matter is neither console has released me- much for next-gen exclusives yet i mean xbox had the medium which i haven't played it doesn't really look that good to me it doesn't interest me and playstation had demon souls which i haven't played but now i yet now i will say i'm playing returnal on my ps5 right now and i fucking adore it it is by far the best game that i've played on either of these consoles so far but I, but as far as next gen goes but there's no competition you know so which of these two do i prefer i would say in a year, I might revisit that when we potentially have got the Halo Infinites and the, then the Starfields and the Ratchet and Clanks and the Horizon Forbidden Wests when we've got some exclusives for each one to play with. Um, right now, if I had to get rid of one right now, I think I'd probably get rid of my PlayStation. But I say that very reluctantly because I think most of you know I prefer Xbox to PlayStation, but the simple, it just comes down to Game Pass. I just have more to play on my Xbox than I do on my PlayStation. I think I might like the PlayStation controller a little more than the Xbox controller. And I've always preferred the Xbox controller in every generation. But I just, the PS5 DualSense controller is magnificent and feels so good in your hands. And once I've got some of those sexy PlayStation exclusives to play, my mind might change. But as of this moment, I think I give the slight edge to my Series X because I love Game Pass. Plus, uh, Xbox has the quick resume which I can hop in and out of multiple games. So I could be playing MLB The Show, cut out of it and go into Wasteland 3, cut out of it, go into Tetris um, Effect, cut out of it, go back to MLB The Show. It's it, Whereas, you know, my PlayStation is basically a returnal machine right now. So, but I, I love both. Slight nod to series everything as of this moment, all right? That'll do it for blowing in the cartridge this week. Thank you to everyone that wrote in. I appreciate it very, very much. Let's get into our smash hit segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. Play one, remake one, erase one. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our listeners three retro video games. They can play one as it was released. They can remake one as a modern game. The third is a race from time forever. And this week we're talking Streets of Rage 2. So I wanted to do a beat 'em up edition of, of Play One, Remake One, Erase One. And I wanted to go with Sega games. But the fact of the matter is if I put Streets of Rage in, it dominates. And if I don't, everyone just writes in and says, erase them all and play Streets of Rage. So I had to go with beat-em-ups that don't compete with Streets of Rage. So it's the beat-em-ups that are fun but are inferior to Streets of Rage edition. And our contestants are Battletoads, Double Dragon 2, and River City Ransom. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get to that in just a minute. And I just, sometimes people write in and point out that remakes of these certain games already exist. 
Um, and I'm aware it's getting very difficult to find three games in the same ish tier of quality that fit a category that don't have remakes. So I have to use games that already have remakes sometimes. So if you play it cool. And if you decide to remake that game, then you can keep the remake that already exists or do your own remake or whatever you want. And if you erase it, then you erase the, you erase the remake as well. All right. There's, there's no room for logic on this show people. Okay. You fucking should know that by now. Um, also, Anyone that cheats at this show gets put on double secret probation. And I, someone asked me how you get off probation. I, I apologize. I can't remember who wrote in about it. How do you get off double secret probation? You don't. You you stay on it. I have a list as long as Homer's Revenge list. You never get off double secret probation. Um, we've added a poll each week too to see what the definitive, the definitive winning combination is. And it was very close this week. But with 28% of the vote, Play Battletoads, Remake Double Dragon, Erase River City Ransom came out on top. And for the first time since we started running polls, the right answer won the poll. That's what I would do too. So good for you, 28% of you. You know what's right. Uh, let's look at some of the wrong answers first, and then we'll get into why that was the right answer. Titan420 wrote in with maybe my favorite answer ever to play one, remake one, erase one. And Titan said, my five-year-old son made the picks for me this week. He would play River City Ransom, remake Double Dragon, and erase Battletoads. He made his picks based on the cover art. <laughs> no sarcasm at all. I laughed out loud when I read that. I That is so good. That is as close to right as you can get without actually having the right order in mind. So tip of my cat to Titan 5 or whatever you want to call your son because you're Titan 420 and they're five. But that's <laughs> Miss made their picks based on the cover art. I love it. Uh, Makeshift Money wrote in and said, play River City Ransom. It's a spot of 8-bit fun and already has the excellent River City Girls as a close enough remake. Remake Double Dragon, as these games have always had the depth of a piss in the desert. Fle <laughs> I've never heard that before. Uh, flesh out a good story, give the gameplay some depth, and make Billy or Jimmy the final boss. And erase Battletoads because it's powerfully overrated and only famous for an obnoxiously hard level. Now, I want to come on here and rip you a new ass makeshift for shitting on Battletoads and put you on. I think you're probably already, you've got to be on double secret probation already. But you're not entirely wrong. It is mostly, I disagree that it's powerfully overrated. I do think it's somewhat overrated. I don't know if powerfully is the word. But it is primarily famous for an obnoxiously hard level being the speed bikes. So I can get on board. I'll, I'll reserve your probation because I can get on board with that. But now see, Luca wrote in and said, play River City Ransom, great NES game that holds up with the best on the platform. Remake Double Dragon 2. The NES version was a somewhat mediocre port of the arcade original, so bring it more in line with the arcade version or give it the full Streets of Rage 4 treatment and then take it in a different direction to set it apart from all the other new beat-em-ups but make it a co-op only game. Local, online, or with a bot if you can't find a partner with special two-player moves that require both players to execute because it's called Double Dragon. I actually love that idea, Luca. And then Erase Battletoads because it's a dumb game that embodies everything bad about unfair difficulty on the NES. The only reason anyone remembers it is because it has Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle rip-off mascot characters. So now, here's the thing, is that Makeshift wrote in and said the only reason anyone knows Battletoads is because of an obnoxiously hard level. You're not necessarily wrong. Luca wrote in and said the only reason anyone knows Battletoads is because their characters ripped off Ninja Turtles. You're not entirely wrong, but you both say it's only famous for one reason, but then you both have different reasons. So you both have a correct reason. But if there's more than one, then you're both right, but you're both wrong. And I was up till 3 a.m. fucking trying to figure this math out, like the Charlie Day meme, and I just was like, they're both right, but they're both wrong. And finally, Shaylee said, shut the fuck up and go to sleep, and I did, and now we're, anyway. You're both kind of right. I still love Battletoads, but you're both kind of right. Pee pee poo poo cuckoo -coo pants wrote in. I love it. And said, I would play River City Ransom as I only briefly tried it before and I enjoyed it for what it was. I'd remake Double Dragon because the franchise had a special place in my heart. The original on the Sega Master System was the first video game I ever played. I can, I, you get, you get those attachments. I see last week's episode for that. Uh, and then Erase Battletoads because even though I was a big fan of the Raging Deucing original, they already tried to make a modern version last year and it was garbage. Garbage. Pee pee poo poo cuckoo -coo pants, you are on double secret fucking probation last year's battle toads was the tits i really liked that game a lot and we're you have been in this community for eight minutes and we are beefing so you're on double secret probation for that electronic emotions program there's some different orders 
wrote in and said, play Double Dragon 2. I've always loved this game and I always will. I'd remake Battletoads. Look, I'm sure this game is perfect as is, but even when I was young and had all the time in the world, I only ever made it past the Turbo Tunnel. As the game is, I will never have the patience or time to get past the rest of that game. And then Erase River City Ransom. It's fun, but I just can't commit to it. If a game has to go, it's this one. I want to play a game like this. I will just play the much better Scott Pilgrim vs. The World game. I'm going to mention that in my own answers, EEP, but yeah, you fucking nailed it. I disagree with your play and remake order because I like Battletoads as it is, but I I also feel like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is a better version of River City Ransom. And I, so I it's not that it's bad, but there's better. And, and then you can erase River City and still have Scott Pilgrim. So we're on the same page on that one. Silver Grunion wrote in and said play Double Dragon because it's perfectly functional as is. Remake Battletoads to include either an easy mode or just be a little bit more forgiving. And then erase River City Ransom because if I want to play a liquid-based game, forget the river and just give me Kevin Costner's Waterworld on the Sega Saturn. Mother fucker. I like Silver Grunion a lot and I really want it. He doesn't write in every week. So I was like, I'm going to get him on the show this week. And you had to sneak your fucking Sega Saturn thing in and I didn't even see it when I copied and fucking pasted your comment into my fucking notes point goes to Grunion there, there's your plug this week you fucking Saturnian is that a real game Kevin Costner's Waterworld on the Saturn this is the console I'm looking that up this is the fucking system that you kids defend Kevin Costner's Waterworld Sega Saturn <laughs> ah shit oh wait what it was on everything Waterworld was on the snes virtual boy ms dos microsoft windows and game boy and then it had unpublished versions for the mega drive genesis sega saturn atari jaguar 3do and playstation fuck me i hate you grunion well done you got it in well done and finally tim l wrote in and said this may cause some atom expletives but i've said erase battle toes because i never completed it as a kid and it makes me salty as fuck i've never even seen the last couple levels i was that shitty at it those games are so fucking tough i played for days as a kid and despite managing to unlock all the cheats on golden eye i couldn't get anywhere near completing the these fucking Battletoads games. Kudos to the rare play testers. They managed to push the difficulty so hard that there can't be many players who can complete them. And then I played Double Dragon. It's kind of a classic. It has been remade tons already. Great games though that inspired many others. And then remake River City Ransom as I never played the original, but it sounds cool. Tim, I don't think it makes you a shitty gamer to not be able to beat Battletoads because nobody can beat Battletoads. So don't even, no, no, I don't, I don't, and anyone that writes in and says they can beat it, I don't believe you. Until you post a video in a straight playthrough without, I don't believe you. No one, no, I don't even think there is the end. I don't think they've ever programmed an end in. They're just like, fuck it, we're running out of time, just make it so hard that no one can beat it and then we don't have to worry about finishing it. I think that's what happened. But most of you are wrong. Grunion was right, but he snuck in that fucking Saturn plug and got disqualified. But all of you said you'd play Battletoads, remake Double Dragon, and erase River City Ransom is right. Including Dave McGee, longtime hot dog, who said I would play Battletoads. We have a remake, kinda. And I honestly believe everyone needs to suffer through the bike and snake levels to reach the next level of gamer. Remake Double Dragon. This game could be great with a good remake. And erase River City Ransom. The game was okay but i still have no idea about the proper way to play it or what and that's my beef with river city as well david and we're going to get into my answers is right now because i agree with you and everyone else that wrote in with that answer um i would play battle toads because it's not perfect not at all and is it overrated sure and is it only known because the characters are ninja ripoffs yep and is it only known because some of the the one obnoxiously hard level yep and is the remake bad fucking nope cuckoo poo poo pants whatever the fuck your handle was but I love it. I love Battletoads. And I can beat the speed bikes. And that's un- inarguably my proudest gaming accomplishment is that I can beat the speed bikes. And I did it on Twitch. Fucking for evidence. And no one's ever taken that away from me. And if we erase the game, then that gets taken away from me. So we play Battletoads. I'd remake Double Dragon. Because I have very little experience with Double Dragon. But Streets of Rage has ruined most older beat-em-ups for me. So I don't think I would like it that much because it's not Streets of Rage. Uh, so like many of the hot dogs suggested, I would remake Double Dragon just with that Streets of Rage 4 treatment and just, mwah. and then I would erase River City Ransom because I played it for the first time a couple of months ago for the podcast and it's fine. It's not a bad game, but it, again, Streets of Rage is kind of ruined beat-em-ups for me and 
as EEP mentioned, Scott Pilgrim versus the world did River City Ransom better than River City Ransom. So I would rather play Scott Pilgrim versus the world. So I can erase River City, not lose any sleep. Good stuff. Thanks to everybody that played. I love this stupid show. Let me break down what I've been playing over the last seven days, and then we'll talk some Streets of Rage. Uh, MLB The Show, of course. I, I, you guys know. Um, XCOM 2 was 12 bucks on Xbox this week on sale. So I snagged it so I don't have to play it on my PC anymore. So I still haven't gotten super deep into XCOM, but now I'm starting over with a controller in my hand on my couch where I want to be. And uh, I'm really excited to get into XCOM, but I, I just haven't done it yet. Uh, I've been playing Zelda 2. Adventures of Link for the NES as it won our Patreon poll. As I mentioned, I'm going to save most of my thoughts about it, but I have a lot to fucking say about that game. Some good and some bad. And uh, primarily, I've been play- I haven't been playing a ton. I've had a pretty busy week around here, but I've been playing Returnal. When I have chance to play, I play Returnal. Um, I-, I love it. I might do an expansion pass on it in a couple of weeks and give it a full review because it is... It's the first next gen exclusive game that I've played. And if this is what this generation has in store for us, we're in for a fucking treat. I, uh, I cannot sing the praises of Returnal enough. I love it. So maybe we'll talk about it. I got to finish it first, uh, but maybe we'll talk about it in a couple weeks on expansion pass. All right. That's what I've been playing. Let's get into Streets of Rage. As you know, I like to give you kids a chance to share your thoughts and memories of games before I get into them myself. And as we've got a community, like I've really grown to, a lot of you have become like my friends and I have private messages going with a lot of you and we talk about video games and stuff like that. And um, I get to know some of the games you like. For example, I know the Mathis brothers are kind of our, our you know, two of our big Resident Evil, uh, um, uh, RPG nerds. You know, I know Slick Rick is a big Resident Evil fan. Raging Demon loves fighting games. I know the Honest Pokemon trainer, it has a hard on for Pokemon. And SJA Flash has been up my ass about Streets of Rage. I feel like since before this podcast started, and I didn't even know Flash before the podcast started. And I feel like he was still yelling at me to play Streets of Rage. So Flash wrote in and said, My time has come. First off, you're welcome. I badgered you long enough to finally play it all those months ago, and when you did, I have no problem graciously taking credit. Nevertheless, Streets of Rage is fucking iconic in this genre. The beat-em-up genre has stood the test of time, and Streets of Rage 4 proves this to be true. Streets of Rage 2 also arguably has the best video game soundtrack in gaming history. At the very least, it's top 5. It's right up there with Mega Man 2 and Final Fantasy 7. I could literally go on way longer, but I won't. I'm just glad you love this gem of a game. And I really do. See, I outside of Streets of Rage, I don't feel the beat-em-up genre has aged that well. Although that said, like Scott Pilgrim is pretty fun. Streets of Rage is, is incredible. I'm hoping the new Turtles game as well. But a lot of old beat-em-ups don't butter my bread anymore. But there's another food reference. Maybe I am a foodie. But Streets of Rage is, is immaculate. I'm totally on board with everything you just said. Joel LeBlanc wrote in and said, This is my favorite Genesis game of all time. I'm proud to have the LP vinyl and the original game complete in box. Fucking nice. I hope I'll be able to play it in an actual arcade one day. Uh, dude, having the... <laughs> I, I have always wanted to just own one game complete in box. I've never owned, even as a little kid, because we just threw the boxes out. I would love to own like a Super Mario Brothers complete in box but i it's too much money or maybe a mega man but that's pretty sick joel i like that and sega games are a little easier because they have those hard cases but that's i love it that's great tom kite whose last name i'm 100 sure i said wrong wrote in and said when i think of retro gaming i think of streets of rage one of those rare games which is no more or less fun to play co-op as it is single player i could write paragraphs and paragraphs about this gem of a game simply put the graphics are fucking perfect the soundtrack is fucking perfect the game is fucking perfect Fuck it. Well done. That was a great fucking write-in, Tom. I don't even have anything to add to that. That was well played. Fucking perfect. Ah, see? Yamcha wrote in and said, I played a lot more of the first than the second, but Sega with this hit the mark again. Such a great all-time beat-em-up. Easy to play, fun to play, and just a great co-op game. The Streets of Rage series is one of the awesome beat-em-up experiences in gaming. Can it? Yeah, it really... I would go as far as to say they are my favorite beat em up experiences in gaming. And this is someone that grew up on the Turtles games and Battletoads and stuff. Streets of Rage laps all of them. They just do. All of them. Mega Man 2 OG wrote in and said, I sunk so many hours into this game with friends as a kid, coming back to it later in life, realizing it still holds a special spot in gaming and that music is some of the best in any game I've ever played. An incredibly important piece of Sega history for sure. And that's one of the things. It's so difficult for me sometimes when I go back and play old video games for the first time now, and we've talked about this before, how do you, you, it's so hard to ignore like the warts and the problems from the 80s and 90s 
that weren't a problem back then. Uh, and I don't think Streets of Rage has any. This game plays as well right now as it did back then. If they had, if the Streets of Rage 2 had never existed back then and they just released it as like a $20 indie game right now and I bought it and played it, I'd be like, this is fucking outstanding. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's aged perfectly. And Johnny CCDC wrote in and said, I'm ashamed to say that I've all but played a level or two from any of the Streets of Rage games because I predominantly had the NES and SNES systems until the Sega came later in life. So Double Dragon, Battletoads, Final Fight, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and all the various arcade games like the X-Men and the Simpsons were life for me. Something tells me, however, after I listen to this episode, I'll find myself firing up my Genesis collection on my Nintendo Switch the exact same day. And I saved that one for last, Johnny, because as we transition into this video game chat, I... If you don't want to play this game by the end of this podcast, they got to check your pulse because yes, you and I, I was the same way. Grew up on Nintendo, didn't play this game as a kid. I have seen the light and I'm telling you, Johnny, just look up. You'll see the light. Play Streets of Rage. It is that fucking good. That's going to do it. We are going to queue up a little bit of Streets of Rage music. And I'm going to talk about Streets of Rage 2 with my buddy Joe, which originally released in North America on the Sega Genesis in I don't know when because I fucking forgot to... December 20th, 1992. Because I forgot to put that in my notes. God damn it. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships. And talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home. And they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Okay, joining me via the blank phone this week is a very old friend of mine. Not in the sense that he's old. Well, you are old. Um, but not in the sense that he's old, but in the sense that we've known each other for a very long time. And that is my good buddy and uh, Sega Sega kid, my pal Joe. How's it going, buddy? Good, man. Good, man. How's it going? I'm good. Uh, before we get into this podcast, before we get into Streets of Rage 2, before we get into the Genesis and all that shit, I would just like to, in a public forum, apologize to you. I don't know if I've ever rescheduled a podcast as many times as I have rescheduled this one with you. And whether it's been I just straight up got hung over and forgot, or I had equipment malfunctions, it has just been a consistent pushback. So uh, on behalf of me and everyone at Remember the Game Industries, thank you for being as patient as you fucking have been with this. I apologize. Oh, no. <laughs> Not a problem. I guess, hey, third time's a charm, right? Yeah, fuck me. And I feel like this is like the eighth time. You're right. It is, by definition, it is only the third try. But I feel like there's been about eight trying to set up one of the official canceled tries. So, uh, like, anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're talking Streets of Rage 2. That's what you got. You guys don't give a fuck about the schedule. You're talking Streets of Rage 2. Now, Joe, I only played this game for the first time a couple of months ago for my Let's Play, and I hadn't played any Streets of Rage until I played Streets of Rage 4, fell heads over heels in love with it and then decided to go back to the franchise and this game is immaculate now before i get into why i want to just 
suck every dick in this video game. I gotta say, like, did you? Because you were a Sega kid, so I assume you owned this game growing up, yeah? Yes, yeah, and, I did. And did you guys like? Did you like just this one? Were you guys big into all the Streets of Rage? Like, I I'm a Streets of Rage noob, so I'm interested in anything you have to say about this franchise because I don't know anything about oh, it. The first one obviously really hooked us. I mean, the yeah, as kids, I mean, it's a great. And I know we'll get into greater detail with this later on, but the co-op in this is phenomenal. And I mean, it was especially having a brother and a sister. I mean, you guys were always fighting over video games and playing it. This is one that we could always play together and just swap somebody out. Right. Um, you know, so we, we spent tons of hours on the first one. Uh, and I, I remember the second one a little bit from the, you know, from a childhood, not a, not a ton. I played it, probably played more of the second one in the last year or so. Okay. And, but, uh, okay. So you grew up on the, so I got it. So, Cause like you're right, beat up like dude. I like I have never played this game multiplayer. I've only ever played it by myself on my Genesis Mini and on the Genesis collection on my Switch. But like there is, there might not be a genre in video games that lends itself to multiplayer uh, better than beat 'em ups. Maybe like fighting games, but like because beat 'em ups traditionally like like you just walk left to right and just keep mashing the punch button. You know, like by yourself, that can get old really fucking fast. So that's pretty rad that you guys were able to play them, like, because it was only two player, right? You couldn't play a three player or anything, right? Yeah, just yeah. the two player. But you guys would just trade on and off, and that's that's crazy that you guys played the first one the most, because like this seems to be the one everybody talks about is Streets of Rage two. Like this is the one that everyone blows their loads over. Well, I'll get this right out, and everybody's gonna probably stop listening once I say this. I do not like this one as much as the first. Wow! Oh, buddy. Yep. There. Oh, that's gonna get some messages. That's. I'm glad. That I have not played the first one to compare it. I've only played two and four. I do like Streets of Rage four better than two. Oh, but four is incredible. Whoa. Well, it's not. Yeah. Like I almost feel like it's not even fair to compare the original trilogy to four because four is just <laughs> four might be my favorite beat 'em up of all time. Like that game is oh. fucking. Anyway, we it's, I'm, it's a masterpiece. It is it is a masterpiece. But you know what? And because I, I want to get back to the Streets of Rage one to two, because I want to know why you could, why you prefer one. But but I just want to say, like for the record, uh, if you grew up with Streets of Rage, if you like these games and you have not played four, I for my money, Streets of Rage four is the best retro comeback of a game. Like I don't know how else to say that. Like they took a retro franchise and just fucking thirty years later decided to make another game in the franchise and. Mega Man 9 and Streets of Rage 4, for my money, are the two best examples of that ever. Because they took everything that was good about this game and just turned it up to like a 15 from a 10 and just made it immaculate. Um, but we, but we're, we're not talking 4, we're talking 2. So then, Joe, that's a, that's a spicy take. And I'm going to give you the floor. And before people start letter bombing you and sending death threats to your workplace and stuff. Uh, and don't actually do that, you fuckers. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't have to say that, but... There's some crazies out there. Uh, why? Why? Why do you prefer one to two? I just I'm, I've never played it, so the floor is yours. Why is one better than two? I maybe a little bit of it is the nostalgia factor, but I, when I was just playing through it here, I had a lot harder time playing number two than I did the first one again. Like like from a yeah. difficulty standpoint or the gameplay, like mechanics. Um. Uh, no, the mechanics are fine. It was more on the difficulty side of it. Okay. I think. Okay. Like, I, cause I mean, I went back through it. I mean, I played, the, I went back and played the first one again on hard and had no problem with it. And I can't even, I was struggling getting through the, the medium difficulty on Streets of Rage 2 again. Mm hmm. You, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. Like, okay. So, like, cause the nostalgia thing I get, like, everyone, I've said it many, many times, I prefer. Final Fantasy 4 to Final Fantasy 6, which is 2 and 3 on the Super Nintendo, for those of you that don't know. And I'm fully aware that number 3 is a better game than number 2. I just grew up with number 2, so I have a nostalgic soft spot for it, spot, spot for it and I love it. So I can understand if you're like, a lot of it is just you grew up with 1, that's why you like 1 so much. But I will say, having never played 1, that's a great way to segue into Streets of Rage 2. This game is not for babies, Joe. No. Like, the, this <laughs> game, like, it's a beat-em-up that will beat you up. It is fucking, it will, that's clever. Uh, it'll fucking, I don't know if it's clever, but th this game will fucking wreck you. I agree with you. You played it on normal, you said? Y yes. And can you beat it? No. Same. Yeah, same here. I can't, I can't <laughs> beat it. I, like, I'm I sure with some practice. I got stuck on the ship. The yeah, ship? The ship I got stuck on. Yeah. No, I, I put, 
Go ahead. No, I didn't. I finished the ship once. It was the level right after the jungle there. Yeah, that's as far as I can get to on normal in the past is the jungle. Like, I'm sure with some time, because that's the thing about these games, right? And like anyone that grew up playing retro games knows like the retro game, uh, 90% of these games, it's it's a practice makes perfect scenario. Like the more you play, the more you know. And I think, you know, with the amount of time I put into Streets of Rage 4 and now the time I put into Streets of Rage 2, this is a game that absolutely... The more you like, it's 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 tough but fair. I think that's that's a great way to put it. Like, and and if you feel that if you feel this game is not fair, if you feel it's at all cheap, let me know. I'm very interested to hear that. But I, for the most part, I feel like this game will fuck you up, but it's fair about it. And if you get good, you'll be able to beat it. That's yeah, that, that makes sense too. Uh, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, like you, you know, like anything else, it's about figuring out the patterns. Yes, of what the bad guys are doing, what they're doing. What bugs me a little bit is the slight randomness with it. In, in that ha- does that 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 adds where the difficulty is. Like, do you mean like in like in what enemies are coming at you, or what enemies are attack, like how they attack, or like what do you what do you mean? Like, what, yeah, like what, when you get a when you get a group of them on the screen all at once, right? So, because like I, I will say that like for the most part, and I learned this with four, I, I, I think it's fair. I will say the the oh, the motherfuckers that come running in from the side of the screen with the dagger. And I can't remember their name off the top of my head, but they just run from left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left until you manage to hit them once. All you got to do is hit them once and then they'll drop their dagger and then they're just useless tits. They're nothing. But those, do you know who I'm talking about? Those motherfuckers. They make me so fucking angry because I see them coming and I can't land a hit before they get me with their fucking knife. And that knife takes so much health away. And I don't, I know it's not cheap. It is. I don't think it's cheap. I think, well, okay. I think it's a little cheap. But it also is fair. You just have to time your punch right or jump, a, like land a jump kick. But oh, them and the motherfuckers that ride in on the motorcycles. Oh yeah, the motorcycles are totally not fair. No, they aren't. They're even worse than the knife guy because at least the knife guy is about half the speed of the motorcycles. They do the exact same thing. They rip from the right yep. side to the left, the left to the right. But like they're moving. And again, once you kick them off, no problem. But it's just landing that fucking kick. And because I, I will have to be so. You got to be so precise with it. You really do. You have to be precise. And again, practice makes perfect. And I, admittedly, I have never sat down and put enough time into this to say I've like full out practiced and got good. And I also don't want this to come across as a criticism because as you guys are going to hear at the end of this, when we score this game, like I'm going to give this game like a full blown reach around. It is going to get a great score because it's fucking awesome. But those are two of the enemies that fucking drive me crazy. And those knife welding pieces of shit, uh, wielding pieces of shit, they're in Streets of Rage 4 too. And I fucking hate them. Yep. Um, but that said, like, I, 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 what I, and I'm trying to collect my thoughts here. What I love about Streets of Rage, because, like, to me, the beat em up people think of the most is either Double Dragon or Ninja Turtles. Like, the, you know what I mean? Like, when you think of beat em ups, those are two of the franchises that come to mind right away. And I, I don't want to talk too much about Double Dragon because I don't have a lot of experience with Double Dragon. But have you played any of the Ninja Turtle beat em ups, Joe? I, I want to say I did as a kid, but, like, I think beat em ups. This is what I think of as Streets of Rage. Is Streets of Rage okay? And that's see, I, I and I and I, I like that because people should think of it. Because like, listen, you guys know what a what a f- insanely borderline obsessed Ninja Turtles fan I am. These games destroy the Ninja Turtles games because I could sit down and play Turtles two and have a great time with it for twenty minutes and then be like, all right, well, I've kind of that was fun. You know what I mean? Like I I mashed my buttons and beat it. What I love about the Streets of Rage games, and this is where my I, I get so I, I legitimately ha- appreciate this very very much, is the there's a lot of there's legitimate strategy to these games. They're not just if you try to go in just mashing buttons, you'll get murdered, murdered. You have to divide and conquer the enemies. You have to use the grapple. You have to throw the enemies at each other. And I gotta be honest, like I, I'm curious, like as a kid, did you guys like? Did you understand that, or did you just mash buttons until you died as a kid? Oh, no. We had it figured out, especially with the grappling, with the throwing, you know, with the timing of the strikes. If you had a, a really tough enemy, and of course, if you just tap the punch at the right moment, you could just keep punching them until you know, till they die. Yeah. So, no, we had it figured out. It wasn't just a button mash fest. Okay. Because I, when I started playing Streets of Rage 4, I was getting murdered, and I was getting so angry, because I was like, dude, why is this so fucking hard? And then you just realized that, like, 
all the other beat em ups you've played where you've kind of learned to just mash punch and jump and shit like that doesn't work in this one and if you've never played a streets of rage game what we're talking about is you can grapple enemies by walking into them and and joe if you have another take by all means but like to me it's walking into them from above or below so that they can't punch you as you're walking into them um yeah that, basically you got to go in at a little bit of an angle or like you said right above or below yeah because if you just walk straight on into an enemy they're probably going to punch you in the mouth like they're going to hit you but if you come at them from like they and again like and i don't think this is a bad thing but like they can't punch um how do i word this outside of their x-axis like you know what i mean like if they, they can only punch directly in front or behind them they can't go up or like above or below them so if you're even no. just a couple of frames above or below them then all you have to do is walk down and like you said walk at an angle into them and then you'll grab an enemy and then if you grab them from depending on if you grab them from the front or the back you can hit them a few times and then you can either give them like a german suplex or you can like overhead kind of throw them across the screen into the other enemies and once i figured that out this whole ge- that, that this game leveled up in my eyes once i figured that out because that becomes the entire strategy is using the oh, enemies as enemies or as weapons it's a great mechanic having that it's so genius like i don't know if they put it in because they found the game too hard or if it was in there right from the get-go but like you have to master that mechanic because then like you said you get in a room of four or five guys and if you're not throwing them into each other and grappling them you're fucked plus if i'm not mistaken once you grapple an enemy the other enemies can't hurt you until you break the grapple am i wrong in that i don't think i am you are yeah if you're grappling somebody Somebody else can still hit you. Oh, okay. I've just always... And then you'll lose your grapple. Okay, okay. Because I've always just, like, I don't spend a lot of time in my grapple. Once I get my hands on somebody, it's a couple quick shots, and then I'm throwing them. Uh, you know yep, what I that, like? That's exactly it. Yeah, because if you take too much time, okay, then they will get you. But, like, not only can you overhead kind of throw them across the screen, but if you do that, like, German suplex, any of the other bad guys that are gathered around will still get knocked down by that German suplex. And that becomes the key, is just knocking enemies down and kind of buying yourself a minute to like strategize and be like, where am I going to go next? And it's trying to keep track of like, who did I beat up? Like who, who's almost dead that I can finish off right now. And, uh, well, I love it. I love that mechanic so much. That, that actually you just brought up is one of the things I actually really do like about two versus one is having the enemy's health bar and being able. Yeah. Yeah. Like under, and like, Oh dude, yes. Every beat em up should have that shout out to like maximum carnage. I think has it too above your health bar at the top. They'll show whoever you're fighting's health bar. And then, like you said, so if I start punching on, you know, Freddy, the fucking knife welding jack off, and I realize that he's almost dead, I'm like, well, I'm just going to finish him off right now. And and that's the, it's divide and conquer, go after the weak first. And another thing, Joe, that I found, wait a minute, so, so wait a minute, okay, I'm going to lose my train of thought. But did you say the Streets of Rage 1 doesn't show you how much health the other guys have? I don't think so. That would be hard. Like I, it's one thing in Ninja Turtles when it's foot soldiers and you just have to basically hit them three times and then they blow up. But like something like, holy fuck, that would be really difficult. I mean, I understand why they wouldn't think to put that in all the time, but that's, it's such a huge, like, I'm glad that you noticed that as well. Like I, I go out of my way to keep track of like, okay, this one and this one of the five enemies on the screen right now are almost dead. I'm going after them first. Oh, hundred percent you do. Yeah. Yeah. And ideally like I'll throw them to finish them. And use them to damage the other guys on their way out type thing. like Exactly, kind of like a lost little hurrah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You like get something out of them before they die and disappear like we all do when we die. We just flash a couple times and then disappear. I think that's what happens when you die. So, yeah. and then, I, go ahead. I was doing, actually, one of the other things talking about like grappling too is I like the, ability to, there, like the ability to be able to like jump over them so you can grab them from, you know, front or behind and change your stance so that way if you want to throw them a certain direction. yes. That's something I don't do enough of, but you're right. Like, so if you, yeah, if you grab someone from behind, so, and if, and, and I'm, I'm almost sure I'm right about this. If you grab them from behind and then you hit throw, that's when you do the German suplex, which if you don't know what a German suplex is, basically you, you kind of arch your back, fall on your back and lift them over your head and bring them down like on top of their shoulders, like spike them into the ground. And if you grab, but you don't really throw them very far. They kind of just land like in the screen behind you. Whereas if you grab them from the front and throw them, that's when you whip them like overhead and across the screen, I think. Uh, or maybe it's the, to think this, maybe Streets of Rage is where Brock Lesnar got the idea to do it because it kind of looks like him. Dude, totally does. This game plays like you're Brock Lesnar. Absolutely. All it needs is the F5 and Paul Heyman. And this game is you're playing as Brock Lesnar. Because well, all he does is Paul suplex. Hammond, but he's a fire spitting bad guy in this game. Oh, that's okay. Quickly, that's the third enemy I hate is the fat motherfuckers that breathe fire and belly flop on you. 
I hate them so much. And they take a beating to go down too. Oh, they do. They do. They, I hate they, them. Oh, at least they're not always spitting fire in, in two. No, they're not. No, but, but if they're not one, spitting fire, one they are. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, they're, they're the one of the worst ones there, but two, they don't, I don't mind. It. And they're, they're the one of the ones that you just, it, it's that timing punch, right? Like every yeah. you know, three quarters of a second, you're hitting the punch button and just keep them at that distance. And, yeah. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Fun. And dude, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I fucking love that. If you can lock in, like you said, just the right moment and then keep the rhythm, you can do a lot of damage. Like you just yep. fucking tee off on somebody and that, uh, it feels great when you know you're in that zone and you have them. It just feels you're just like, I, this is maybe going to sound a little bit morbid, but like I have legitimately had times where I'm playing this game and I'm wailing on somebody and I'll just like, I'll think about all the times I've died in video games and how angry I get sometimes. And I just, I channel all of it into the fucking B button on my controller. Like, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, this is for you, Soda Popinski. And this is for you, Echo the Dolphin. And I just mash that fucking button. And it feels so good. Uh, but those fat guys can go fist themselves. I hate them. Not only the breathing oh. fire, but the way they do that giant belly flop, like the Vader bomb thing. And if you get caught in it, it does so much damage. It knocks you across the screen. Uh, oh, fuck. I, oh, those fat. Every time I see one of them, I just cringe. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Here we go. You fat, cheap. Oh, I hate them. I, I don't, oh, I don't, worst. I don't know their name, worst. but I hate them. Oh, um, they are. I actually have that pulled up here. There was something else that I was going to fucking, I and I, and I knew I was going to forget if I didn't bring it up and then I didn't bring it up. So we were talking about the combat. We were talking about the strategy that comes with throwing enemy. Oh dude. Yeah. You mentioned that you can jump over them. I always forget that I can do that, but because the two throws make are so different from each other. It can be a huge thing if you, because like, I don't know how you play, Joe, but I try to stay to the side of the screen as much as I can instead of being in the middle. And, yep. and then the key is like enemies can be off of the screen and will still be able to walk back in and attack you if they're not dead, which is kind of beat them up. We all know that. Anyone that's played a beat them up knows how that, you can punch an enemy, knock them off the screen, but if the if their health bar is not empty, you know they're going to be coming back. They don't disappear once they leave the screen. Uh, but I like to play against the side of the screen and then I know... I try to keep track of who's coming in from the side I'm against, and then I can see the entire board or the entire screen from the other side of me and then strategize about who's coming toward me and who can I whip across the screen to keep them away and keep them at bay. And I always forget that you could jump over them to the other side. So it's like if the German suplex, because to me the German suplex throw works great when you're surrounded by enemies because you kind of slam the ground right underneath you. And the hip toss, throw them across the screen throw works great when you're keeping them at bay or trying to buy yourself a little bit of breathing space. Um, and you can jump across them and then be at the, be in front and be behind, flip around to the other side of them and then do a different throw. And that's such an underrated mechanic that I personally keep forgetting to use. So that's a good pull by you because that is a lifesaver. Yeah, no, but I mean, that was it, it being in the right position, as you said, especially when you don't know they're coming in from off screen, but yeah. you don't know where vertically they're coming in at, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, I hate it. Fucking ah, it's it's just they found a way, and like, and this is an old game. Like this game, I just look. This game came out in 1992, 1992, 1993. So this game is almost 30 years old, and I literally was playing it an hour ago, getting ready for this podcast, hour and a half, whatever. I was playing it this morning, and uh, I was like, dude, like we haven't even gotten into the graphics and the sound and stuff yet, but like the gameplay holds up. Like Turtles in Time, as much as I love that game. I, I'm not even gonna say it hasn't aged well, but it's a type of game that I couldn't play over and over and over again. Whereas this game, like, I'm like, dude, this game plays as well today as it did in 1992. Like, there's a lot of replay here because they made the 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 combat in it deep enough to have a, some at least elements of strategy to them, as opposed to just being blind button mashers. Um, and frankly, I'm a little surprised these games were as successful as they were because I'm 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 shocked that more kids didn't find these games too hard. To be honest, like, I'm not I don't know if that's a thing because I didn't play them as a kid, but you said you loved well, them as a kid. The other side of it is too, and I said though it's so much easier as a co-op. Right, right. It's, it's, it's the perfect couch co-op. So, and maybe you don't know this, but like, I wonder, like, do they put more enemies in if you play two player, or is it the same amount and you just have a second player helping you? I wonder. That I don't. That I don't know. It. it yeah, I don't know either. I would guess it's the same. Yeah. Because yeah. at any time you can have your second player jump in. Oh, that's right. Yeah. When I was playing it today, Shaylee was watching and I was like, dude, grab a controller and play. And she's like, no, this game looks dumb. And I was like, yeah, it kind of, <laughs> well, it kind of is. But I was like, no, you should play. I was like, I, oh, 
dude, this I would have played. I would have played so much of this as a kid because yeah, you would have ma- like perfected each level and known like what enemies are coming and like you could see, oh to be able to play two player and even just split the screen and have one of you take the left and one of you take the right or something like that. Ah, oh, yep. Godsend. Godsend. That's a great hey, pull. No different than just like Overcooked, right? Separate out and yeah. So somebody go left, somebody go right. Shout out to Overcooked, by the way. One of the oh, best multiplayer game. games ever. I don't care what anyone says. That game's fucking awesome. Um, so okay, so I think we. Oh yeah, and then the only other and oh, I guess there's still more mechanics. So like, so we've already covered the flips. We've already covered using enemies to fight off other enemies. You can pick up weapons. Some of them are laying around. Some of them enemies drop. And that's another thing I love is when enemies bring in weapons and you you take them from them and use them. Like the knives, you can get the lead pipe, like stuff like ah. that. Because um, do the weapons like I feel like the weapons aren't overpowered in this game. But my God, do they make a difference when you use them? Oh, oh they're a, they're a game changer, aren't they? Like, and I think you like, only get so many swings out of them, so you have to kind of ration it and make it count. Um, but they're 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 uh, it's the the what I'm trying to say is like between the grappling mechanics, the weapons, stuff like that, the way they balance the difficulty versus the combat and versus the stuff they give you is that that to me is the secret sauce in these games is they they clearly were play tested a lot like a lot and they were like this part's getting tough so let's throw an enemy with a weapon in here and then players probably if they got this far in the game they're gonna realize like i gotta hit that guy first because all i have to do is hit him once they'll drop their weapon and now you have a weapon to fucking tee off on them with um just yeah and i just and i never felt like i never felt like weapons were where i didn't need them to be and i felt like every time i was in over my head someone with a weapon showed up do you know what I mean? That's a fair take, yeah. Like you're right; it did seem like that. But there always ended up being, whether I said it was a pipe or whether a knife, or with the ninjas with the swords which would show up. Oh, the, I love the swords, man! I love the fucking swords so much. That's my oh, favorite the weapon. Pipe or the sword. Yeah, that's my favorite weapon. Just give um, me something that has a little bit of range. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the range, like the knife, is a nice, like you know, beggars can't oh. be choosers weapon. But I would rather have the long weapons for sure. Oh, the perfect thing with the knife is the fact that you can throw it. Yes. Yeah. And that's a big thing too. Like if you're fighting off a couple of guys on the left side of the screen and then a big, you know, one of those fat guys or a bad enemy comes in from the right, whip your knife across the screen at them to knock them down and then keep teeing off on the guy on the left. Like it's, and if I'm not mistaken, the enemies can pick the weapons up and use them again too. Um, which adds more, yeah. which adds more realism. Like, is it like, cause there are games where they would just like, when they, when you hit an enemy with a weapon, they just drop it and it disappears. And I love that anyone that's got a weapon in this game, you're going to be able to use it and they're going to be able to pick it up and use it again. It's it was like, a really nice addition to the duel well, to number two versus number one. Oh, did the weapons disappear? In number one. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like they couldn't pick them back up again. Yeah. 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 I love that, dude. I love that. Cause not only, and I don't know if you play like this, Joe, but to me, another element of the strategy in these games is rationing. Like if I'm like, if I'm not in horrible shape right now, it's like, I'll leave that food or I'll leave that weapon until I need it. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't want to waste its hits on like this one lowly enemy. That's almost dead already. Um, so I always try to do that. The only problem with that is you can't go back in this game. Like once you move forward the screen, you can't walk back to the left or whatever direction you were coming from. And it, like, I, dude, the amount of times I've left food or a weapon on the ground because I was trying to save it, ah, so often it infuriates the shit out of me too. Ah, I fucking. You know, and, and sometimes you just you, it just doesn't work because you're in the middle of your fight, you're going, you're going, and you're chasing the guys to the right of the screen as your food and shit's leaving to the left, and you're just. Ah, it is great. It is so damn frustrating. You're, you're trying so hard to hold on or it's like, I'll be another thing I'm bad for is like, I'll be fighting like a really tough enemy or a boss or whatever. And like, if you've never played this game, basically I think you, I don't know if you can change. I know in four, you could change the food they drop. I don't know if you could do that in two, but you'd either get an apple or like a full chicken, like a full like Turkey or whatever it is. Um, like a Christmas dinner fucking platter. And like, and if you eat the apple, you get some health back. If you eat the chicken, you get your full health back. But like, it's the same thing. I'll try to ration them. And like, especially the chicken. If I see a chicken, I'm like, dude, you have to have me on life support before I eat that fucking chicken. But oh then, yeah, you're not touching that unless you have to. Right. But then sometimes you start getting wailed on and you're like, oh, I'm going to fucking, and the amount of times I've died before I could get to the chicken that I, you know what I mean? And it's like, I would have rather have used it when I had half of a health bar left as opposed to trying to save it till the very end. And then some bad guy lands a cheap fucking punch or something and kills me right before I get to eat it. 
and burns yep. a life. Ah, oh, the fucking oh. rage. The streets of rage. Get it? Uh, anyway, uh, that sucks. See what you did there? Yeah, no, that sucks. The other worst thing is, I guess, uh, when you get into the first part of the screen and then they throw the turkey at you, like, right off the, like, right to begin with. Yeah. And so you're sitting there, you're going to fight through and save it. And, of course, all the enemies go up there and then you accidentally eat it when you have, like, seven-eighths of a health bar still. Oh, dude, yeah. Why make the, like, the the eat, the picking up items? Because, like, you can pick up the food, you can pick up weapons, you can pick up, like, they drop money and stuff, which just counts towards your high score, which probably gets you, I assume it gets you, like, more lives or continues or whatever. Um, but the, the, the fact that to pick up items and food and stuff is the same button as your basic punch is so frustrating that's a legit criticism because the amount of same thing dude like i'll have almost entirely full health and just accidentally fight my way up near a piece of food and then pick it up without meaning to because i was just trying to throw a punch ah oh. and then you just like you just take that half a second where you just sigh and you're like that fucking sucks because you just wasted that and chances are like again this game is very well planned out if they're giving you a chicken they're you're probably going to need that fucking chicken Oh, 100%. Yeah, and so to accidentally... Ah, uh, I totally forgot about that. That is so infuriating. Like, make it so I have to push down while I push punch to pick it up, or just something. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to just the same button that you're going to tap 400 times while you play this game. Ah, uh, yeah. fuck, I hate it. Ah, that makes me angry right now. I, I can't agree with that anymore. <laughs> that fucking drives me insane. Son of a bitch. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was ri- it's ridiculous. It absolutely... Oh, yeah, because that'll that'll end it. That alone, especially in the later stages of the game, that just ends your your life. It does, yeah. Like you really do need to. Uh, like the game is designed around rationing your supplies, and to accidentally pick it up, especially like you said, or like we were saying, if they're giving you chicken, you're probably going to need it. So if you use it really early when you didn't need it, it would be like you know when you're playing a shooter and it, the game gives you like a whole bunch of grenades or like some really good ammo for your best gun. And you're like, it wouldn't just like video games aren't aren't Christmas presents. Like they're not just giving me these for no fucking reason. Like it's if I'm getting a big loadout of the best items in the game, they're, they're giving me this because I'm about to get fucked up. And when you burn that giant piece of health re- rejuvenation before you need it, ah, it's almost like yeah, that's this, that's it, that's the side because you know you just killed yourself. You're like I just fucked that up. So I can't agree with you more. That should not be the same button as as punching that. Fuck that. And that is my single biggest criticism of this game, actually. That's it. Ahead of anything else, it's that. That should not be that button. You have three no, it, buttons. It really shouldn't be. It's the Genesis controller. You fucking weirdos had three buttons. It, like, like one is punch, one is jump, one is, like, your special attack, I think. Yes. And that's the other thing I wanted to get into. And this is by far, and this is certainly not the only game to do it, but I think this game implements it very well. Is that so? You, you basically have like you can you know you have your your attack button, you have your jump button, and then you have every character's got their own like special attack, which is like a more powerful attack, but it also takes some of your health to use. Um, and I've I've always enjoyed that mechanic because that can be uh, a really handy uh, mechanic for when you're in a lot of trouble. That's when you br- you know what I mean. Like that's when you break that move out, burn a little bit of your health to buy yourself some time. And it's nice that you have two versions of it. What do you mean? Well, each character, I mean, they had like just their standard special, like their jumping special or their other, you know, there was two specials per character. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing I like is that every character has their own one. It, it like, uh, dude, shout out to every fighting game or pardon me, every beat em up, whether it's a good game or a bad game. One of my favorite things a beat em up can do is show you how each character is different, like show you their stats. They have different <clears throat> attacks. And I love the way the Streets of Rage games do that because you it it is almost like a fighting game in the sense of you can figure out who your main is like who you who you are most comfortable with, and then you stick to them. And you know how you know like some some people's special attacks maybe will cover more ground, but they're harder to hit or or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, and I and I and I love like yeah, just that not every character has the exact same special attack is a big deal. And I know it sounds super primitive by today's standards, but. I played a lot of Turtles games, and that wasn't always the case with those games. You know, I, I love that in this game. Well, um, that is one of the thing, things they really did good with this game is having every character be different. They all handle different. They all, you know, all their attacks are a little bit different. Yeah, it gives it like not only does it give it more variety, but it also like it gives it more replay because you're like, okay, well, I've beaten the game as Blaze. 
let me go back and play it as you know whomever right i use blaze because blaze is my blaze is my she's my girl that's my main all day i love her um do you have a yeah. is there a character you prefer it's either axel or blaze for yeah. sure I'm just looking at their stats. Yeah, like so so this is so awesome. Like this is what I love is that uh, all all four characters their stats add up to 10, but there's like so Axel has a 2 for power, speed and stamina, but then a 3 in technique and a 1 in jump. Um and then Blaze, who's my favorite, has a 2 in everything. And then there's like Sammy has a 3 in speed and jump, but a 1 in power and stamina. So Sammy or Eddie Sammy Hunter called Sammy in the Japanese version of the game. I only ever played his blaze. Um, but like, so he's super fast, but he can't take a beat. He can't do any damage or take a beating at all. And I, and that's, and then, you know, conversely, when you play his max, he's super strong, but he's, he crawls. And I love that dude. That's just, and, and, and fucking huge props to the streets of rage franchise for this. Not only are those stats there, but it's a, and you've played some streets of rage in your time too. Like it's, it's such a notable difference when you switch from one character to another, like it's instantly noticeable the way they handle differently. I love that. Fucking love it. Oh, they did. They did such, they did such a great job with it. No matter how you cut it. Yeah. Like you could play through the game as Axel, um, and then play through the game again as Max and go from like a normal average kind of more balanced character to this is giant, slow hulking beast and play the game in a completely different fashion. And that's one thing by today's standards, when people are looking to get 20, 30, 40 hours out of their games. But like back in the early nineties, like how many of us, like, I don't know how long it would take you to beat this game, but I assume that if you don't suck, you could beat this game in under an hour. Like if you're good yeah, enough yeah. to beat it, like I, I assume it's, you're looking at about an hour. It looks like, right. But, like, for you to throw in, it's got four difficulty modes. It also has four different characters you can play as. And each character handles completely differently. Not only in the way their stats run, but the way their attacks land and stuff like that. Um, and that's not even including multiplayer. And it's like, dude, there's a lot of content here. And that's... I've always respected when game developers do that. And back in the early 90s, that was not the focus of a lot of game developers. And 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 we've talked about this on the show before but like there are these certain retro games where like i get so excited and so passionate to talk about them and i want and like i know game developers don't listen to this but i wish they did because i wish they would understand that like if you take the time and put the effort and put the polish and put the shine on your games it'll 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 be remembered do you know what i mean like and maybe that doesn't matter to them but there's a reason streets of rage 4 was so successful there's a reason so many people in our community love this franchise there's a reason that this is now probably my favorite sega genesis game and it's because there was so much time and care put into it back in the day when it wasn't necessary it wasn't people would have just bought this game because they liked it looked cool do you know what i mean like all four characters like here's the thing joe all like i don't know if streets of rage ones was like this but like streets of rage 2 all four of these characters could have handled exactly the same other than looking different and people would have still bought it and been happy with it do you, oh, 100% they would have. do you know what i mean like that was not necessary at all but it's that extra level of attention that you pay that has a lasting effect on your franchise um well, I, just, and I, just, I feel like they did do that for the first one as well they did i think so I mean, they must have done something right with the first one if there was a, a second and a third one made. Like, I, I don't know. I, I have to, like, because everyone talks about Streets of Rage 2. And I'm not shitting on Streets of Rage 1. I'm just saying that, like, everyone talks about Streets of Rage 2. That's the one people bring up. So I have to assume that um, the the first one maybe hasn't... I don't even want to say that maybe it hasn't aged as well, but it's like Mar it's like Super Mario Brothers to Super Mario Brothers three. You just took what the first game did and you just pumped it full of steroids and did it better. You know the first that's game exactly what they did. Yeah, 100%. Like, like the first game is laying your foundation, and then after that you you improve on it. And there's so many franchises that are an example of this. But uh, I yeah I just I I truly can't shout out everyone that worked on this game enough for the amount of just the amount the attention to detail and the amount of content they put in here and how finely tuned the combat is and the item drops are and this game is tough but it's like I said it's tough but fair and if you learn how to play it you can beat it and that's what I I love that Joe I love difficult video games I love them and maybe I don't come across as that because I talk about how Dark Souls is too hard and I'm a pussy and I get angry at video games and stuff like that and that's all true but as long as the game is tough but fair I'm usually willing to give it time and and I feel like the Mega Man games are like that I feel like Celeste is like that I'm just pulling hard games out of the top of my head and I feel like this game is like that like what's that 
I said fucking Celeste. <laughs> but it's tough but fair. If you learn how it to is. play it, you can. And that's what this game is. And that's what makes this game so good. And then it's the fact that, like I said, it just isn't boring. It never gets boring. Never no. gets boring. It's always, you're always on your toes. You're always applying different strategies. It never gets old. And we haven't even talked about the music or the graphics yet, which are fucking oh. unreal. This, Joe, this is one of those games where as a diehard, lifelong Super Nintendo kid, I look at it and I'm like, I'm jealous of the Sega kids that had this growing up. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's, it I, it oh, go ahead. It's so bright. It's so colorful. Yeah. Like I was playing it this morning on my, I was playing it on the Genesis cl- uh, collection on my Nintendo Switch. But I was playing it on like our, you know, we have like a 60 inch TV in our living room and I was playing it on that. So it's blown up on this giant TV. And if you've played a retro game on those giant TVs, they don't all look good. So, no. so, some of them actually look pretty not good. Um, and this one looked like I was, I said to Shaylee, we're sitting there. I was like, this is one of those games that back then I would have said games will never look better than this. And today I play it and I'm like, this is why the Super Nintendo Sega Genesis era is still my favorite era of video games. Because when when you really hit your stride with these games graphically, they they look perfect. Like they hold up, in the, and I mean that for both the Genesis and the Super Nintendo games from that era that looked well, that looked good then, still look great now. Um, and this game, like you said, is so bright, Joe. The backgrounds, the backgrounds in this game are phenomenal. It's insane. I like I find myself just looking at them sometimes. Well, and they're not static. Yeah. And there's lights flashing. There's stuff moving in them. And- I, dude, there's a couple levels where, like, whatever's in the background, you can see it and it very slowly moves from the right to the left. And you can tell that it's like, it's that distance, right? And it's, it's like, oh, well, that, that Ferris wheel or whatever's in the way far distance. And we're walking past it up close, but it would slowly crawl across the screen in the background. And then, like you said, flashing lights are going on back there. And, like, they didn't, like you said, they it's not static. They didn't just throw in, like, a a wall and then be like, all right, well, that's good enough. There's a wall back there. Oh. It's 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 incredible. They're so colorful. I love it. Oh, and even actually having some of the stuff in the foreground. Yeah. Dude, like, yeah. Stuff, and it's never, it doesn't interfere with the game. It's not like it's taking away from your view of it all. It's just showing that you are in a you know, 3d environment. Yeah. And even, even environments where like, like the bar where, um, it, realistically that should be a pretty bland place. Cause everything is just the color of wood. You know what I mean? Like it's like a saloon <laughs> yeah. or whatever, but they find a way to like, they mix it up. They put stuff in the background. There's tables and pianos and stuff in the foreground that you walk behind that you can't interfere with, but you do kind of disappear behind them. And it gives you that extra layer of depth. And it's that it's, those are the little, the, fucking nailed it joe those are the little things if they had never put any of those items in the foreground for you to kind of disappear behind as you're walking nobody would have noticed like no one would have been like oh there's no items in the at the front of the screen but that they did it you do notice it and it just makes it look so much better it's oh actually speaking of the bar level like the bartender in the bar itself yeah there's a bartender just watching you fight at the bar like while you fight the weird dominatrix lady so much detail in that. yeah and uh, actually i'd like to shout out a couple of, i love the bosses in this game because they're not just like generic giant hulky like some of them are but even the ones that are big giant like you fight the wrestler that looks like the ultimate warrior and you fight yep. him and oh oh because that Abedidi. if i'm not what's that i think his name was abadidi or something yeah yeah and if i'm yeah. not and if i'm not mistaken he's at like the baseball diamond and you fight your yeah. way through like a stadium and like you first you're like outside of a baseball diamond and then you go into an actual baseball stadium and then you fight out to the pitcher's mound in the stadium and then the pitcher's mound goes down to this underground like underworld fight area and then you fight this fucking giant wrestler with people cheering in the stands around you and i was like oh, what a clever awesome. fucking level cuz like i'm a huge ball fan and i'm watching him walk in i'm like holy fuck we're actually fighting in the ball stadium and like and you can see the scoreboard and shit in the background and it's just ah oh. Fuck yeah. I love I love the detail and that kind of stuff. I love that. Oh, actually, I hate that boss because he's really hard. But he looks great. Like, he looks like the ultimate warrior. He's fucking huge. Um, you fight the dominatrix lady in the bar. You fight... There's that fucking giant, bald, fat boxer on... I think he's on the ship. 
Oh man, I hated that guy so much. Yeah, and he looks like Bald Bull kind of from Super Punch Out. And I fucking me too, I fucking hate him too because he's hard as hard as balls. Um, oh yes, and of course he way well, he just jumps around the screen. Yeah, it's not so, it, it's it's that's cheap. Yeah, he is cheap. <laughs> I agree. I hate that guy. He's a cheap piece of shit. I hate him. Um, the only but the only boss. Well, I, I, I fucking hate that guy too. But the boss that irritates me the most is in the second level when you're in the construction area and you have to fight the guy with the jetpack. Oh, because I yes, hate, hate flying enemies fucking drive me crazy in these games because they're so hard to just accurately land an attack on. I wanted to bring that up when we were talking about the motorcycle guys going from side to side. And I feel the same way about the guy with the jetpack. Oh, fucking. They just drive me crazy fucking yeah, wild me too and like that's in any beat em up like in the turtles games when their fucking foot soldiers are in those flying helicopter things shooting at you for those of you that have played you know what i'm talking about those fl- flying enemies in these stationary beat em up games i get that you're just trying to change it up and it's not bad but the, the pro like to me the problem with the flying guys in this game is that so much of the game is built around the mechanics of the strategy of grappling and throwing and stuff like that and those guys then it turns into a classic a classic uh, that's <laughs> fuck that's uh i'm getting fired up um but that's when these games turn into classic beat em up button mashing jumping and punching and i yeah. don't i don't yeah like I, I fortunately there's not enough of them to become a big nuisance it's not like you have to fight wave after wave of them but yeah i agree the flying guys are kind of bullshit they they uh, and you only and at least you only get them one at a time yeah oh fuck oh imagine like a sea of them fuck that um oh dude and while we're talking about the backgrounds you know another thing that's rad is the way that like uh, i can't remember what level it was on that it was doing it to me maybe it was the ship but there are levels where like the enemies will pop up in the windows behind you and just throw like a grenade into the screen and then they'll disappear again and then you gotta deal and the grenade will hurt the enemies and you so you can lure the bad guys over to the grenade and then get away and let them hurt themselves um and again it's those little touches what's that the bikes will explode too. Yeah, the, yeah, but I they they always get me. I never seem to fucking get away from them before they fucking get me. But yeah, the bikes will explode too. So that's something else that you need to and just the way that it interacts with each other. I love that, and yeah. I love that everything that can hurt you can hurt them because yeah. you can use it to your advantage. It was a nice touch that way. Yeah. Oh, it's I love it. It's fucking awesome. Something else I wanted to point out. Sorry to go back to the gameplay for a minute that I forgot. Uh, you can't punch while you're moving. Like you can't walk and punch. You have to like your your character stops while you attack, and yes. and I when I first started playing, I was like ah fuck off, like that's slow. But then you quickly realize that again, there it's strategy. That's part of the strategy of the game is like get yourself into position to land these attacks. But you have to you can't keep moving around while you're punching. You've got to stick in you know stick in one place and then throw your punches. And so it's the key is is putting yourself in the right position to land those attacks. And I just maybe that may not sound like a big deal to everybody, but again, it's just another layer of the strategy in this game that I just got off on because I thought it was so well done. Um, I loved it. I never, I never really noticed that. Yeah, I just to me it's a big deal because there is a lot of games where you just kind of mash the button while you're always walking around and especially in this game where like positioning is three quarters of the battle you want to put yourself in a position to be able to hit them where they can't hit you or do you want to attack them from a place where they can't counter attack you and knowing that you're not gonna be able to move once you start you can't just mash attack you've got to be in position before you start laying into that attack button because you're leaving yourself vulnerable while you do it and uh it takes it dude like i i think like, I'll tell you, if I had never played... Because I put a lot of time in the Streets of Rage 4. I got really into that game for a while. And I'd like to go... Like, this podcast, Joe, has made me want to go back and play the Streets of Rage some more. Because these games are I think are that's so what good. I'm going to do after we get off the phone. Yeah. Like, I'm so tempted to fucking... I was playing it this morning, and I'm so tempted to be like, okay, one more game, and then I'll move on. Um, It's all those little things. It's, it's, it's the way that it's not just blind button mashing. And that's what I get off on. And then you add in these incredibly colorful graphics and we've only talked about the backgrounds we talked about the enemies even the characters themselves that you control like they all look so different and distinct and unique from each other and just so bright and colorful and i i i i just i i cannot express how envious i am of kids that grew up playing a game that looks as good as this one I think this is one of the best looking video games from the the 16 bit era period. I really it just looks every there's nothing about this game that doesn't look great. Nothing. Um no. like you said and 
like you said, how they all move a little bit differently. They all do things just a little bit differently. They all look great. Like when they're all throwing, they all have a separate animation for how they throw and how they deal with it. Yeah. It like, even if you're not good enough to beat the game right away, it makes you want to play it more and over and over just to try the four different characters to find, like to find the one that works best for you. Do you know what I mean? Like when I was playing streets of rage four, I played as every character before I settled on blaze. And so when I fired up this one, I was like, well, I'm going with my girl blaze. And I still think she's awesome, but this makes me want to play as the other characters to see which one, because it, and I, I'm sure that certain characters make the game harder than other characters, but like, it just makes you want to play as all the different characters to find the one that best fits your style. Do you know what I mean? And like you said, it's, and there's a big dude like, and it's the same thing in four, uh, skate or whatever their name is. The fourth character in this game, the really fast character is the only one that can sprint. When you hit the double tap, like the double forward button, they'll oh, sprint. I forgot about that. That's right. And the other three characters can't sprint. They just slowly walk to the side all the time. Cause dude, I was, that was irritating me a little bit this morning. So I was like, why the fuck isn't she sprinting? And then I was like, oh yeah, you can't sprint if you hit that double forward and then attack you just throw like blaze throws this wicked kind of roundhouse flip kick that i fucking love it's awesome but they but you can't sprint so that's the advantage to using the 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 quick weak character in skate is that they can they can sprint but their attacks don't do any fucking damage um i look ah maybe i'm just going around in circles but guys i i i fucking adore this video game i love it all of you that have been up my ass up my ass and there's several of you to play the Streets of Rage games. Now that I've played this one, I'm like, holy fuck, this is the real deal. Like, keep making these games, whoever's in charge of this. Keep making these. Because they're so... The best beat-em-ups ever made. Straight up. Best beat-em-ups I've ever played in my entire life. Um, if there's a Streets of Rage 5, it's a definitely a pre-order. There's no offense or bots. Yeah. Like, I, I would I, not even hesitate. I don't know if I could resist myself. and I'm And I'm so anti pre-ordering but i just like these games are so good dude i'm looking at the review scores for streets of rage 2 on wikipedia right now and like i one two i see two scores that aren't at least nine like nine out of ten or ninety percent like it's just it's just, it's like the wikipedia page is considered one of the greatest video games of all time and it's uh, part of me is like it's a beat em up guys come on but now i'm also like dude no this is this is this is one of the greatest video games of all time. It's so good. I'm floored that this franchise, that's something I would love to know, Joe. How the fuck has this franchise been dead for 30 years? How? I don't know. I, it, it does not make any sense to me. Like, I get that Sega, and this isn't a shot at Sega kids, okay? But I get that Sega, you know, kind of died after the Genesis. I get that. But, like, how was there never a Sega Saturn Streets of Rage? Or how was there never... A, a Dreamcast Streets of Rage. Like, how did you guys just walk away from this? Ser this series is fucking awesome. Like, I like I'm 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 lusting over this fucking. Se I can't stop. I love it. And I'm like, why isn't there more of these? What are you guys doing? What the fuck? How about stop making shitty 3D Sonic games and make another Streets of Rage instead? Let's do that. I'm floored that it took so long to make another one of these. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway. Oh, I'm reading right here. Sega is reported. To, uh, Sega was reported to have attempted to bring the series to the Saturn, and early in the production cycle for the Sega's Dreamcast, a demo tentatively titled Streets of Rage 4 was made. Uh, blah 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 blah. Neither the Saturn nor the Dreamcast game, however, came to fruition. I, oh, that's fucking weird to me. All you Saturn kids that are sucking the Sega Saturn's dick all over this fucking podcast and trying to irritate me. If you had Streets of Rage, maybe I'd give your your fucking your console a chance. Um, anyway. <laughs> now, actually, one of the weird things I had with this, too, and I, I didn't, it's a little, totally not a little off topic there, but you can play it mobile. What do you mean? You can literally download it on your iPhone. Really? Yeah. Wow. I wonder how it would hit, like, doesn't seem like the type of game that would lend itself well to playing touch controls. It doesn't. I tried. It's terrible. Oh. But, <laughs> which is the fact that you could do it. The fact right. that it's actually on there was great. Yeah, it's. I love seeing all these old games getting ported to mobile, but I'm also kind of like, pick, choose your battles. You know what I mean? Like the like streets. Like Mega Man is on phones, and I'm like, that sounds. I without ever playing it, I could promise you. I promise you, Mega Man with touch controls on an iPhone fucking sucks. Promise you. Yeah. That, that would be terrible. Be awful. And I and I 
having never played Streets of Rage on them, I can promise you this is the same thing. This is meant to be played with a controller in your hands. And I got to be honest with you, dude. I So I've played it on my Genesis Classics collection on my Switch, and I've also played it on my Genesis Mini. Vastly prefer playing it on my Genesis Mini with an actual Sega Genesis controller in my hands. It fits yeah, like, that. It was designed to play with that controller. It, it was. I mean, like the only way that I would obviously be able to play it is the Classics collection on my PlayStation. Right. And it's still not – that's the one thing. It's the controller is different. Yeah. Like, I mean, because there are, there are some games – uh, like Mega Man, oh, there's a there's a Mega Man Wily Wars. It's it's basically a remastered version of Mega Man One Two Three on the Genesis Mini, and I love the way it looks, but I think it plays like shit because I don't think the Sega Genesis has a very um, precise D pad. If you've never held a Genesis, the original Genesis controller, it was that like circle with the cross on it, but then it has the four yeah. diagonal corners. And for oh. games where it's specifically left, right, up, down, I think that controller is awful. But in a game like Streets of Rage, where you can go in all eight directions, that controller is a godsend. It works so well for games like this. Perfect. Um, and and, I, and I've always just said, I really just like the Genesis controller. It just is a fun, it's a toy to me. Like, it's a fun controller to play with. It's so big and weird shaped, and I love how clicky the buttons are. And I just, I feel like I'm playing with a toy. Which is what I want to do. That's not a bad thing for video games are toys. I know some people criticize that like Nintendo is such a toy company and blah blah blah. But I'm like, dude, I, to me they are toys. So make it fun to play. You know, they, they don't all have to be super fucking precise to stay. It just for certain games that controller I think sucks ass. But for things like fighting games, things like this, that all oh, that controllers, sports games, that fucking ah, controllers fucking beautiful. Fuck yeah. But. The six button variant screwed me up, though. Yeah, I gotta say, if I've used the six button, if I've used that controller, I don't remember it. Like maybe as a kid, but in my adult life, I've never held that. I've never used that six button controller. So you, you're as the as someone that grew up with a Genesis, you prefer the three button classic. I do. Yeah. All right, yeah, good. Without question. Yeah, like my <laughs> understanding is the only, like where the six button controller really shines is stuff like Street Fighter and some of those games. And I don't, I, <laughs> you could literally hand me a controller that plays Street Fighter for me and I would still get fucking worked at Street Fighter. I'm so bad at those fucking games. It doesn't matter to me. So I, I, I love this controller. I, I love this controller. And I, guys, I've, I, I've talked about it on in the past how, Maybe my favorite thing about Remember the Game has been my discovery of great games in the Genesis library that I always missed out on as a kid. And some of the best have been like Shinobi 3, uh, Shining Force. Um, th th and this one, like, I'd have to think long and hard about it, but Streets of Rage 2, if it's not my favorite Genesis game, it's 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 1B. Like, it's a contender. Um, that's not only one of my favorite Genesis games. I think that this, this game has a shot at making like my favorite games of all time list. I love it so much. It is just, it never gets old. And, uh, I, we've, I mean, we've, we've, we've kind of fondled its balls for an hour. Um, which is crazy. Cause I think we might've talked about this game longer than it actually takes to beat them it or to, to beat it. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm. I, I, I'm done. I'm, have you got anything? Did we miss anything? Is there anything else you feel necessary needs to be pointed out before we score this bad boy? I think the only thing we really got a second dick yet is the soundtrack, though. Oh, the soundtrack is amazing. I, dude, there are some games that we cover on this podcast where I am so excited to pick the music I'm going to use for the episode. And this is one of them where I'm just like, oh, I, I can't wait, dude, there are retro games, Joe. And, and I, and when I say this, I mean, including some of my favorite games of all time, like super Mario world where I'm like, this is great, but I don't need to listen to this music over and over again. Like, it's like, I'm done. Cause that's, there was only so much you could do with the music back then. There really was. Whereas this game, I was playing this this morning and I had the TV turned up and I was like this, like some retro games I put on my headphones and I just listen to a podcast or something while I play. Just this gonna game, make that point. What's that? <laughs> that some, you know, some of the retro games I just put on a podcast or put on music and yeah. use the TV. But whereas, but not this one. no, no, this game, you listen to the fucking soundtrack. <laughs> this game is, oh, from the soundtrack to the graphics, to the gameplay, to the mechanics, to the fucking 
the, the difficulty to the replayability to the quality in it. There's literally next to nothing wrong with this game. And it sounds so good. You've already heard two songs. And in just a minute, I'm going to be queuing up a third song from this game. And that's just a sampling. We could like, oh, fucking dude, I'm embarrassed that we almost forgot. So like, that's on me. I, cause I was so excited to bring up, uh, the music and I almost forgot to bring it up. And oh no, that was on my must bring up from this for sure. Good man. Fucking incredible. I, uh, God, now I want to play one and three. I just, cause now I'm like, now I like this franchise enough that I want to play all of them just to see where, I, like, where I would rank them. See, and I, I don't remember three. Um, well, I, on, on Wikipedia here, it is saying that it was a little bit less, uh, acclaimed than the first two. It doesn't mean it's bad, but it, it does say that it was a little bit less acclaimed than the first two. So, did, so did you, sorry, did you own two or did you only ever own the first one? I, I thought we had two, but I might be wrong on that. We might've just rented it. Oh, okay. Um, see that's to me, this is one of those, cause like I had this problem forever cause we never owned super Mario brothers two. And it took me years to convince my mom that we needed a copy of super Mario brothers three. Cause she was like, we already have Mario. And it was like, yeah, but like but different Mario. Exactly. And like this to me, beat em ups are one of those franchises where like, I could see that being a hard sell to be like, well, yeah, but we, I know we have streets of rage, but we need another, we want more of them. Like it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, uh, non gamers don't understand. They don't get it. So I just look at the exact same thing. But. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it could be the exact same thing. It doesn't matter. Um, I was just looking at the best selling games on the Genesis. Cause I was curious if streets of rage got in here, but it, it didn't. It's not in the, not in the more than a million sellers. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Which surprises me. Like it's Sonic the Hedgehog. Cause it was bundled with the system and then Sonic two and then Aladdin and then Sonic three, Sonic and Knuckles. Those are the top four. So oh, that sucks. It's the fucking console Sonic built, man. This is why Sonic's on the Mount Rushmore of gaming. And we already talked about that on a different episode. We're not going down that fucking hole again. Um, no. Yeah, I'm spent, man. Are you, you good? You get it all out? Feel better? I think so. I think yeah. I'm okay. Are I got to definitely go play some Streets of Rage here, though. Oh, I, dude, I'm telling you guys, if this podcast, I know er, almost every week I get messages from at least one or two people being like, yo, listen to your show. Maybe want, make me want to go play game x whatever game you're talking about play this it's streets of rage 2 is on the genesis classic collection if i'm 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 i don't 100 well i don't know if it's individually available on xbox and playstation but it is on the genesis collections that are on playstation and xbox and and you know what those collections are worth the money those collections are absolutely worth the money and if you're like "Ah, i don't really see myself i don't want to play a bunch of old genesis games then just get streets of rage 4 like i'm not gonna say don't play streets of rage 2 but like i like i'm not gonna speak on behalf of every streets of rage fan out there but like most people can 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 agree that streets of rage 4 is the definitive streets of rage game right absolutely like i i don't think that's a crazy t- i'm not saying these old ones aren't worth your time but like it, i played streets of rage 4 first and as much as i like streets of rage 2 streets of rage 2 just feels like a retro version of streets of rage 4 that's what they are so just play some streets of rage guys i'm telling you i i gotta think long and hard about where this game fits into my favorite games of all time list but it's a contender for that top 20 list it's so fucking good um, it is 100 percent in my top series of all time. Oh, oh yeah, the Streets of Rage is your favorite series of all time. It's got to be right up there. Yeah, I, dude, I, all I've played is two and four, and they, yeah, like, I mean, I'm never gonna put them ahead of my Mario's and my, and uh, and my Mega Man's and stuff, but like, you know what? They actually might creep in to at least contending on the bottom of my top ten, just because I've enjoyed them so much. Like, I, I have not had a bad experience with this franchise yet. They're so good. I okay. We're, we could keep going. We're at an hour. I'm like I'm like I'm like, dude. Like we've 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 sucked the dick raw. There's nothing left to say about Streets of Rage here. We've done it. Um, no, like I said, we've talked about it longer than the game. Play yeah, the, the game is. We got to score this thing. I don't want to score it out of two because that's fucking dumb. Um, hmm. Looks there's eight levels. All right. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I was either looking at the levels or that came out in 1992. But yeah, eight is better. So okay. So score Streets of Rage two out of eight, Joe, and go ahead. I'll give you the floor. By all means. I would. I'd have to seven. Yeah. 
Yeah, easily. Easily. Seven, seven point oh I'd even yeah, I might even go seven point five. That's where I was it's gotta be right around there. That's where I was gonna go. Honestly, like this game loses half a point for not being Super Mario World. And that's the Super Mario World tax that almost every gameplay it pays. That's it. That's it. This this is to me. Having not played everything on the Genesis yet, having not played, and I should clarify that, there's still a lot of gems on the Genesis that I have not yet played. As of now, this is my Super Mario World on the Genesis. Like, this game is, I put this game that high in my er in my hierarchy. It is, it is, it is that S tier level. I, 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 I love this fucking video game. So it's getting a seven in it, maybe even like a 7.75 out of eight. Like, it's that good. 99 out of 100. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, I'd go there. Yeah. I'd have to. Buddy, thank you for doing this. My Again, my apologies for making you wait so long to do this podcast. But uh, I hope it was worth it. This I Fuck yeah. Th- oh, what a great game. I'll play the original and we'll get you back on down the road and we'll talk about the first one. Oh, that'll be good. Deal. Hey, now, just as long as, unlike your last podcast, I was the guy who put the nail in the coffin let's hope that doesn't happen to this one yes agree yeah fuck isn't that the truth yeah uh for all those of you that don't know my very first podcast ever was adam wastes time and joe was the very final guest and then the show shut down so if this was the last episode of remember the game then at least we ended on a high note with streets of rage 2 so good stuff yeah, buddy that's true. Th- thanks for hey, doing buddy. this man i appreciate it no nope, always great chatting with you man That's going to do it for this week's episode. Joe, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking Streets of Rage 2 and every single one of you hot dogs listening to this right now. Thank you so much. Episode 151. We are officially on the road to 200. And I'm not going to say that every week because it's going to be a, a fucking year from now. But we're officially on that road. May was another record month for downloads. And when I, like, barely, <laughs> like, we broke our download record by like 100. And we get like, seven eight hundred downloads a day or something like that so like we literally broke it by like a penny but we fucking broke it i don't give a shit that's still awesome uh i'm excited we have some great episodes coming up so i appreciate all the support if you're interested in supporting the show even more buy some merch it's available to remember the game podcast.com or if you just want to couple throw a couple of bucks our way support us at patreon.com slash remember the game you may not think two dollars matters it really fucking matters and you get so much content for that two bucks there is a fucking there's got to be a hundred bonus episodes sitting there well wait no pretty close there's got to be at least 80 85 bonus podcasts sitting there waiting for you right now downloadable right onto your phone plus you can join our discord plus you can play play one remake one erase one and all sending comments for all our shows plus you can vote in our patreon poll which will be going live any minute maybe live by the time you hear this plus you can dm with me plus i'll say your name wrong two bucks what the fuck else are you gonna spend it on like a fucking mcdonald's burger Shit's gone in like eight seconds and then you just feel sick all day. I'll make you feel sick all the time. Patreon.com slash remember the game. That's a horrible plug. Two bucks a month. Um, That's going to do it. I'm going to leave. Listen, in a second, I'm going to play the Patreon shout outs. And normally I record them at the beginning of the month for the for the month. Uh, as I record this, it's been June for 10 hours and people's payments are going through, credit cards are a problem, stuff like that. So for next week, I'll be recording the new edition for June. So if you sign up on Patreon between now and next week's episode, you'll get into these shout outs for the entire month because I record them once, okay? So there you go. Thanks for listening. I'll be back fucking tomorrow because all I do is podcast anymore. And uh, go play some Streets of Rage if you haven't. I get, remember the game seal of approval. That game fucking owns. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Cheers. Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not produce all the content I churn out every week without your support. So I would like to take a quick moment to thank everyone that has supported us at patreon.com slash rememberthegame. And I saw a huge... Oh, God. There's like 270 names this month. 
and I'm just got them in a random order. I'm gonna fuck some up, so if you want to listen to it to see if I fuck yours up, go ahead. And just a quick note, I record this at the beginning of every month, so as I'm recording this right now, it's May 4th, may the 4th be with you, and uh, I fucking hate that joke. And I record this uh, at the beginning of every month because it takes a long time to do every week, so if you signed up after May 4th, thank you so much, but you'll be added to this in April, or pardon me, in June when we record the next one, okay? Here we go, a huge thank you to... Broken Spoilers, Matthew Day, Plucky Beast, Super Dave, Owen the Game, Furchuck, Brynamite, Joe Kirby, Dale Baker, Ian Watts, Jeff Bergeron, Paul, Ronnie Sachs, Hammond Egger, Josh Valentini, Chance McCoy, Sean Radford, Karth from KOTOR, Sean Raspberry, Rose, Scott Roseberry, Shannon Willis, Astros, Astral Soul, Big G, Classic Crusade, Russell Aldridge, El Sock, Adam Ferrer, Tom Maya, Oprah's Iron Fist, The Old Man of Gaming, A Sharp J, Lee Sparks, Zonko504, Scarlet, Kyle Bolton, Chris Freeman, Tom Calvert, Seth Mayfield, Jose E. Marco, Titan Entertainment, S2 Vaughn 5000, Bones 02, Guest House Productions, K Cuz, Candido, Born to Do It, Daniel McKee, Dan Wagner, Elijah 232, Joseph Gonzalez, David, Tim Chambo, Captain Cool, Explode Processing, Nathaniel Shelley, Swedish Fish, Lee Whitworth, Tense Sparkter, John DeShazo, Squints, Carmichael Nicholas, Gary Heather, Corey Street, David Phillips, I Worked at Subway, Raul Aguiar, Joel LeBlanc, Johnny CCDC, Wolf Magic 21, Paul, Fob, Kerry Waka Waka, Ryan McCowan, Trevor Oaks, Mike Burks, Nathan Freak, Too Loud for the Crowd, Pizza Power, Matthew McLean, Doogie, Logan Hale, Cody Poland, Murat Pepper, Spencer C. Weiss, Chris Coplin, Electronic Emotions Program, K Jam, Lord Finish, Aaron Baker, Dane Upton, Goth C, Good A, Mega Man 2 OG, McJr, Jafar, Rogue Agent, Thor the Hammered, Stefan Fukasawa, Joshua Davis, John Byrne 86, Andy Hudson, Retro Bismol, Sam Wright, Devin Gordon, Seriously Ron P, Derpimus Prime, Mr. Me Seeks 0406, Ninja Lunchbox 79, Wolfgang, Darren Bugnish, Troy Xuniak, Brian Robbins, Ferdy Martinez, JB Retromania, AJ Freeman, AJ Jones, Kevin, The Anti Spatial Podcast, The Novel Console, M Fel, Zoo Troy, The Honest Pokemon Trader, Sean Clifford, Pi Messiah, Jesse Clark, Kelly, Rodrigo Tomazzi, Derek J- Jane, Mercury869, Mad Ships, Potato Bob Guy, That One Kid Nick, Dana Wucherall, Amy Gillen, James Anderson, MPG in Buffalo, Pat Duddy, 8 Bit Bovey, Poops Loomis, Raging Demon, Mr. Satan, Troy Cherichetti, Silver Grunion, Peebs, Mulverine Films, David Schnatterer, Martin Greenwood, Dominic S. Thompson, Tim L. Adam Beasley, G9PSX, PB McFadden, Jared, The Giraffe, Tim Riel, Starro Probin, Jay Clutch, Very Cool Dude, Vincent L., X Water, Retro Ghosty Ghost, Ryan Bayshore, Christopher Russell, Mike Maloney, Defunct, Tommy Reynolds, Ryan Kinchin, Arpad Botos, Jer Bear, S2S, Adam J., Zane Donovan, John Quack, Ryan Yeager, Morgan, Geek Life Radio, David Ray, Danny Vega, Tom Kite, Brian Medeiros, Andre SJA Flash, A Town, Mark Jones, Nathan Tromblay, Chris Knife 007, White Burrow, Miles from BringBackRetro.com, Brian Br- Brian Ransom, Matt McLean, Mr. Nick, Michael Haig, The T Word, Miklos Blackshaw, Aaron Lawson, Stitch, Dario Oman, Adam O'Sharello, Jeff Johnson from Game on GNT, Craig Rutt, Leon K. Scott Brooks, Yamcha, Wyman Brooks, Chuck Schlarp, Chris Campbell, Brandon O'Brien, a.k.a. Tin Smasher, Mackenzie Wheeler, No One Cares, Dave Thompson, Dan T, Adam Anderson, Ben Boucher, Matt Brown, Lil Bunny Fufu 89, Mark 209, Kyle Paul, Vladstein, Nick Sills, April Sane, Alex Martinez, Brian McKay, Fraser Burns, Bullfrog1221, Jason Cortez, Kevin Hufford, Do How, Dylan, Jordan, Desert Tortoise, Joe Mack, They Call Me Badger, Kate Roberts, Luca, Rescognito, Dive Vault, Gary C, Andrew Wright, Rex Sheldon, Charlie Medeiros, Josh Morgan, Chris Fleury, Corey, Doug Dorn, Evan Refuse, Slick Rick, Ben Bullio, Ashley Cronenbitter, Nathan Warzecha, Warzica, Joe Gillespie, DNA Gaming, Dave McGee, Sean Razine, Ryan White, Robert Lippa, James Clark, Christopher Sumner, Keeds and his stupid arrow handle, Jeffrey Mathis, Joshua Shenfield, Fake McHugh, Matthew Mathis, or Michael Mathis, pardon me, Tyler, Freezer Burnt, Stupid Monkey, Andre, Sharonic, Ben Drinkin', Joe Buck, Todd, Makeshift Money, and Dave. That was ugly. But thank you all so much. If I didn't screw up your name, it means I like you just a little bit more. And I'll talk to you guys again soon. You're the best. Cheers.